What you are about to watch is a compilation of all of my ranged weapon tier lists. I have officially updated every single ranged weapon in 2023 and a couple of them in 2024 because I was a little slow to make it, but this is still going to be the 2024 updated ranged tier list. As the year progresses and I do some 2024 updates to those lists, then I'll make a 2025 updated list. That's kind of the plan. So I want to apologize for being a little slow in that front. And I also want to say that because this is a compilation, every single one of these have been uploaded separately on my channel already they will all be linked down below with timestamps you can skip around however you want but it's been a really popular trend on my channel to just put them all in one place so you guys don't need to go and find like seven different videos and the only thing i want to add is that the only change that i'm very certain about has uh changed in any of these tier lists is the assault weapon video in this video i have uh rated the ranger a little lower than it should should be if people who have been following the channel know that i have sort of rediscovered this weapon i even named it my favorite ar it's super accurate it's a two burst weapon Weapon. you can click 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 and it's like a two shots for one it's like a semi-auto and a burst hybrid i don't care it's super accurate really strong and uh, it's like a high a tier low s tier maybe but every other tier list that you're about to watch has no further updates like that so uh yeah enjoy the year is 2023 and i'm looking at my 2022 tier list thinking I've got some new things to say. First and foremost, we've got a whole list of weapons that I have tried more of. I've used different loadouts. I have expanded my ever increasing knowledge on this game. And I just, I have new opinions on the Blackout AR. I have new opinions on the Blizzard Blitzer. I have new opinions on the Art Deco AR, which is neither of those. It's this one right here. I have new opinions on the Dragon's Roar. Some of these are better than I used to think. Some of them are a lot worse than I used to think. I have new opinions on the Wraith, which I ranked pretty low last time. The Gamatron's a little high. Bundle Bus is an old classic, but completely obsolete in the modern age. Have you seen the Xenon Bow? It's incredible. Now, we've also got brand new weapons and new tiers. So Archer should have added the tiers by now. I don't think he did. Maybe he has to send me a new list, but I'm going to check in with that in a second. We have two brand new ARs. I know a lot of you guys, when they first came out, you asked me, where is the Primal Rifle and the Pulse Pounder? you know, where do they land on a tier list? And that's what we're here to talk about. So I'm going to check in with that right now and see if we can get that sorted. All right, we got it sorted. We now have an F tier for garbage weapons and uh, the nailer has its own home. Now, real talk, the nailer is bad, okay? Is it the worst weapon in the game? Ugh, I really, it's not, okay? It's not, but it's like, I've tried to use it in my fun 160s playlist, shameless plug, link to this entire playlist down below. This is actually where I got a lot of the experience that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today, uh, live on camera. I said, have you heard of the Xenon Bow? Cause I ran it in MSK and the bundle bus should never be used in the Storm King fight if you have the Xenon Bow. So I have used a lot of different weapons in a lot of weird ways, like triple crit damage. And that is going to be factoring into my new opinion. So I'm gonna close this tab uh, or at least get it off screen because I don't want my old tier list to impact my opinions. I want this to be a fresh list. So let's talk about my favorite new change to the entire tier list, and that is the Blackout AR. So for those of you who have not been following the channel, my new favorite loadout in the entire game is actually the Blackout AR, where you are dashing around doing millions of damage, and it is super, super fun. It is really, really powerful. All you have to do is dash, and then you do millions of damage you one shot everything like that okay maybe not smashers but they die very very fast that is such an amazing loadout that it is the new s tier winner i, I said i was gonna put this away but i do have to share there were only two s tier ars in the entire game in my opinion i have a very informed opinion but that explosion damage is so strong that if you use this weapon correctly, it's an S tier weapon. While we're on that topic, the Mythic AR and let's see if we can find it, the Nocturno are two weapons that don't need much say. The Mythic AR is super, super strong, really good group damage. You can switch off between targets and it'll eliminate them super well. You can stack that with Crack Shot, which is one of the loadouts that actually like kicked off this entire playlist. If you are stacking damage over and over and over with Crack Shot, it makes some of the best damage in the entire game. I can't find it, but it is so, so good. And uh, yeah, the, the Mythic AR is incredible. And the Nocturno. So the Nocturno, super good group damage. It's, it's a founder's only weapon. Not only founders, but you have to be ultimate. It's completely unattainable. I'm sorry to say, but it is what it is. It's insanely strong as it should be. It's like a $100 bundle that this comes in or, or came in. So yeah, really, really strong weapon. I won't dwell on it too much, but uh, that's where I'm at. So let's go through some of the weapons in order, and I'll talk about where the new opinions lie. So the Argon AR is pretty 
okay. It does some damage. It's not that strong. It's locked to energy. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I know that I have a supercharged copy of the Electro Rifle in my in my inventory. People have asked me about this. Isn't that just a reskin of the uh, Argon? Yes, it is. The Electroshock Rifle feels really good, okay? It makes good sounds. It's nice and accurate, or it feels accurate. The Argon, curiously enough, it actually shoots slower than it sounds like it, it cues the, the the fire sound effect like the bullet leaving the gun twice as often as it actually shoots a bullet so curiously enough it's um it, it actually shoots slower than i thought and i don't think the electroshock rifle is on here but it's the same so if i find it later i'll correct it but it's it's the same weapon it's the maybe low b tier we'll see how my opinion changes beat blaster i'll say is also low b tier it does pretty good single target damage and group damage again I have uh, a long history of using blast in the past with weapons, so I always use that as a baseline just to see how the weapon was on its own. But as I was going to say, again, I've used a lot of different loadouts lately, and I I've really embraced Toy Rockin' Out a lot more than I did in the past. And some weapons really do well with Toy Rockin' Out. Some weapons can have two or three crit damage perks, and that does change things. Some weapons don't have more than like one or two crit damage perks, and that makes a difference. So some weapons pair really well with the perk, some don't, and um, yeah, I think the Beat Blaster has pretty good group damage. Blizzard Blitzer is, I've said it many times before, just as a curious factoid, it is the highest DPS uh, AR in the game when you factor and reload. But it has very bad group damage, a slow projectile. You need to lead your shots with that slow projectile. I'm, I have two, two points on that, because it also has limited range, very limited range, and it's locked to water. That's five, maybe four good reasons why it's... S tier damage, but like maybe B tier usability. It's not a bad weapon. Do not get me wrong, but it does not need to be A tier. And now there are some weapons in the game that are like locked to blue or less. I'm just going to kind of stick them down here. These are lower variant weapons. Archer put them on here just for uh, completion sake, just to have a thorough list, but they don't really have any business being discussed here. Now, Bundle Bus is one of the weapons where I have a new opinion. So I put it in the A tier, I believe, because it has a long history of having great single target damage. It's good for like the Storm King's uh, crystals. It's good for like high damage in Frost Knight, but the Plasmatic Discharger exists for that amazing damage. The Xenon Bow is an ultra economic pick for the Storm King fight. Today, I was running Storm King on stream, Twitch link down below, and I used it unironically, not for a video, not for anything other than it was really good so what i'm saying is the bundle bus is still may maybe a b tier weapon by today's standards but provided the other options that you have in the game it's just not a or s tier anymore you, d you just don't need that power and it's not even that strong compared to what we have now i am going to rank things better on the left worse on the right but these four weapons are uncomparable so i'll just leave the bundle bus there until we see something comparable uh buzz cut this is another weapon that i'm really inexperienced with buzz cut and hunter killer are the same by the way they have the exact same stats except that the buzz cut is a scavenger weapon which means it's just more uh cheaper to craft and more cost effective to craft so you will get um, more damage, whatever, more bullets used from the weapon before it breaks for less average material cost. So it, it's just basically going to be wherever I put these, the buzz cut will be a better variant because it's just more cost effective. Again, these are weapons I have not tried in a very long time. These are semi auto ARs that are pretty accurate and probably do good damage. I literally don't know. I was probably power level 90 when I use these. So I'll put these in a safe C tier, but I've never heard any defenders of these weapons. These could be some videos that need to happen. I just don't know. Now I saw something earlier. I put the candy corn in mid B tier last time. Candy corn has S tier damage with triple crit damage totally rocking out, but it's locked to physical. Which means versus elemental targets like mini bosses, smashers, and general fatties, enemies that are going to cause you trouble, you are useless. This weapon cannot hang in the in the high end. I might have just been pandering to you guys to put it in mid B tier because I know this weapon has a lot of fans, but now, I'm not buying it anymore. It's a D tier weapon. Like, it's an S tier sometimes that you can never trust. So, this is where the tier list is going to vary from last time. When it comes to weapons that are so kind of situational, I could put this in four different placements in four different videos. But this time around, I'm just going to be a little more harsh. Like, 
I'm putting this in D tier because regardless of how much damage it can do to a physical target, its lack of elemental damage coverage and lack of group damage for that matter means that I just, and me and my friends and the people that surround me and the people that I see on stream, it just never gets used. If I'm wrong and you guys want to fight for it, comment down below, but I'm putting it in D tier. I'm just not having it today. Uh, this is the Ray Gun, I believe. It is not the same as the Argon. I used to think it was. It's, it's pretty not great like the argon is in b tier that might be generous now that i think about it but i have used electro rifle and it did okay so the ray gun is is kind of a, a different version of it i believe it's worse i don't genuinely know it's one of those weapons that's like locked to energy and you will shoot a lot of energy cells with it but it will not carry the damage that it needs to justify it so yeah it doesn't really justify its own expense so i'm just gonna put this in low c tier because i don't really know but every time i've used that weapon it didn't really do much for me death stalker easy d tier this weapon is garbage uh it's got a scope it's got a burst and maybe with the right toy rocking out build it can be good i know anniverse shouts to you she made a whole like recording for me to show me how good this weapon can be with brightcore and fire by the way she was having a fun time but I just wasn't that impressed still. I, I just don't think this weapon has a lot going for it. Again, comment down below. Hey, this fun loadout, if it proves nothing else, it means that I am willing to try some weird stuff like the clacks and the Vitatech Blasters. So if, if somebody wants to say that I'm wrong here, go for it. But it, it was a it was a bad weapon every time I tried it. I'm, I'm tempted to put it in F tier, but no, I'm nicer than that. It does kill some things. Dragon's Roar. Again, I think I put this in A tier last time. Okay, high B tier, high B tier. I have used it since then. I gave this weapon double crit damage and totally rocking out. I figured with the with the uh, with the fireworks blasting off, maybe this could be a really strong weapon. It did not impress me. It was like, it was bad. I thought, hey, I want to make a video on this, and I canceled the video idea. That's how poor my experience was with this weapon it's high c tier it was eliminating some things it hits surprisingly hard per target but it shoots so slow and it's so inaccurate and it's not just slow shooting but it's clunky do you guys know what i mean like it's not it doesn't feel regular like every time i feel like it's ready to shoot again it's not and you get penalized for clicking too fast so i just high c tier i guess and i don't know uh i'm actually i said i wouldn't but i'm gonna refer back to what i said here i put this in the middle tier i don't remember the name of this i do not remember the name of this but i remember how it performed and it's been a long time so this is another one that's worth another revisit mid b tier is okay um oh my I, i'm completely blanking on this i'm gonna go find out Okay, it's called the Duet, and I did not even have a copy 130, which means my experience with this was very bad. However, it has the damaging Cloud of Steam 6 perk, which went a very long way for the double boiler. Now, I have not tried this weapon in a long time, but considering how strong I know the Steam Cloud 6 perk is, and how good the single target damage is on this, I'll, I'll put it in high B tier. I'll put it in high B tier. This might be a weapon I should check out in the future. Um, I'll leave it there. Drum roll, really good single target damage. I'll put it in A tier. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little biased because it's a founder's weapon, but this thing could do really well. And with Chaos Agent existing, you could reload with your grenades. And that actually takes away the bit of the sting for the slow reload on this weapon. You could do some good damage with this. There might be a little bias on that. We'll see. But uh, yeah, Gamatron. I have tried it since I've uh, recorded that video. And it did not impress me. I used to put this in A tier when people ask. But now that I've actually... Um, seen how it's performed now that time has passed it just does not hold up i don't know it, it, it did not impress me maybe i'm wrong and this needs another look but ugh, maybe mid c tier above the ray gun is where it fell it just yeah like i looked at my list and it was in low b tier uh, maybe mid c tier is where that should belong gravedigger actually a really good weapon i use this again i tried it again toy rocking out and blast in the past in the same video it did really well i'm i'm impressed i'll put it right up there with the drum roll i don't know which one's better but that's where it is hacksaw as well is a treat to use this weapon has weird perks it can have crit damage but no crit rating and it has a lot of strange options where you can run like mag size is normal but mag size what was it damage crit rating and fire rate maybe is what i ended up using i was reloading with my grenades as usual with, with chaos agent chaos agent and toy rocking out make this weapon incredibly fun it's unironically very strong it requires a loadout but it's good especially since it has affliction as well yeah it has damage to afflicted i forgot about that uh, affliction goes a long way because it helps the crowd clearing hammer crush really good single target damage pretty not great crowd clearing i'll actually put this in um right up here at the bundle bus because it's a very similar style weapon bundle bus might be better single target but the hammer crush can actually shoot more regularly and be a primary 
Honestly, impressive single target damage. I'll, uh, I'll I'll recommend you try it out. FAMAS did not blow me away. It's kind of there with the Death Stalker. It's a burst weapon that does not do enough damage for how little damage it... It does not do enough damage for how slow it fires. And I just think um, low D tier is probably fair. I'm, I'm easing up. I'm easing up on the candy corn. I think low C tier is where my opinion is shifting towards. Pain Train! I always want this weapon to be better than it is. It's so good. Single target damage. Chugga, chugga, chugga. But it, uh, it kind of struggles with crowd clearing. I don't know. I don't know. I'll put it in low A tier. I'll put it in low A tier because it's a fun weapon to use. It performs well. But it doesn't blow me away like like the hacksaw did with that fire raid and, and all that uh this is another lower weapon that i forgot to put down here ranger somebody in the comments was defending this in my previous tier list i have not used it since then so my opinion remains uninformed again probably haven't used this since the hunter killer so i'm just gonna blindly put it next to that i'll put the gamatron above these in fact yeah i think i think the candy corn if it's gonna be moved up to c tier should at least be better than the semi-auto weapons so ranger i really don't know i i will admit I'm, I'm less informed on that rat king and hydra last time i put them in high b tier that's because when you pair them with first shot rio you could actually do a pretty good amount of single target damage i don't know if um if that matters as much to me now as it did before but I had a good time using these. I, I, I think low A tier. D does that line up with last time? Last time they were high B tier? Yeah, I think I think low A tier is probably pretty good because when you've got uh, First Shot Rio and Totally Rocking Out are redundant. So First Shot Rio and like Preemptive Strike or Blast in the Past, whatever. If you make a good build around this, they actually do really good damage. Hydra and Rat King are very similar weapons. Not the same. This is Hydraulic. This is Rat Rod. Um, it's not a scavenger situation, but they're both um, pretty solid. Rat King can have that five hits cause an explosion, and it shoots five projectiles. So you can explode on every single hit while critting on every shot, at least the first six. It's, it's pretty good. Um, so it's a pretty good combo. You can make good work of those. Razor Blade might be, where did I put it last time? Might be the new addition to the A tier. I gave this a try. It's not a video on the channel yet. I don't even think I made a video on this. I didn't record, but I tried this with double crit damage and some normal perk options. It is, is it's a good weapon. It's a good weapon. It might be as smooth as the, as the Pain Train. It's a very solid weapon. What's awesome to say is it's a base game weapon. So you can get this from normal missions, llamas. It's very accessible. You might run into this just kind of normally. I cover the missions every day on my channel and the, the Razor Blade is available almost daily almost daily and i love that a base game weapon can be that strong because uh yeah it's, it's great siege breaker is just a perfect b tier weapon it was in my top 10 ars list long ago and i stand by that it's solid everything you want good fire rate good perks good damage uh okay crowd clearing because of the fire rate it does the job is it gonna blow you away? Nah. Are you gonna want to switch to something else for the mini boss? Yup. <laughs> Is it okay against mist monsters? Eh, you might want a secondary for that, but it does okay. It does okay. Uh, I think I'm just gonna put that in high B tier. It's just a very good uh, normal weapon. All right, so Steam Piston, again, have not used this since the weapon came out. It had really good single target damage. Seeing as it's a semi-auto that I'm unfamiliar with, I feel like it's in good company right here. If it has that Steam Cloud 6 perk, maybe it can be higher. Steam Cloud's so strong. Because like when you activate the Steam Cloud, it's group damage, and as enemies run into it, they take that, that damage. But that damage is like as much as the weapon did... Um, I've been using it with a double boiler and that thing hits for millions, so maybe I'm skewed, but I think I'm gonna put it in mid C tier until I have a chance to try it out. Maybe in 2024, if I redo this tier list on an annual basis, which I think I could do, uh, if they continue to add new weapons semi-regularly, we've got a couple of new ones down here, um, maybe, but, uh, I'll have to give that one a try. I'll have to give that one a try. Swan, low D tier. That weapon is so bad. I've tried so many times. I just can't make it work. I don't even need to explain. Terminator is like the hacksaw. If it had, um none of the things that hacksaw has like damage and damage <laughs> it's just bad man i've tried it it's like low c tier mm, not quite as good as the candy corn mm, i don't know if you consider how strong the candy corn is while how bad it is versus elemental the terminator may, might split the difference i think that's where i'll put it it's it's not that great floor flusher is one of the weapons i said my opinion changed i put it in like mid a tier i have since ran this weapon with the correct six perk for the elements double crit damage and totally rocking out and i used to recommend fire rate that was a blunder on me on my part um we did not used to factor in reload as much as we should have so fire rate is math <clears throat> mathematically the highest damage output but you gotta reload so i tried it with a reload perk and damn 
Damn, I cannot put it in S tier. The reason I don't put things in S tier is because I take S tier very seriously. S tier weapons can do everything. You do not need a secondary anymore. These weapons have crowd clearing, amazing single target damage, excellent perks. They are the best of the best. The floor flusher just struggles with crowd clearing. So this thing is like, is like kissing S tier. But you do need a secondary to take care of the crowds. I recommend like the big shot shotgun, any launcher that you want, the Xenon bow secondary just to take care of crowds. But it's super high, super high S or A tier. I, I, I think that's where it belongs. The Grunt is a pretty not great um, semi auto. It can be kind of fun sometimes, but it's not that exceptional. It's a little better than these other options. It's completely different from the fully auto weapons, so you just can't compare. I'll say it's like a better steam piston, but again, I need to try the steam piston more. So as far as semi autos, I think it's on the higher end. I've tried that one with a lot of uh, different loadouts. It's, it's pretty strong. Uh, the Tiger is very similar to the Death Stalker, just really bad D2 weapons. Like I've tried to make it work. Maybe it was the Tiger that Anniverse sent me the video on. I think she was talking about the Tiger, not the Death Stalker. If you already left a comment, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to edit it now that I've mentioned this later in the video But again, both of these weapons I had similar experience. They're scoped and I just can't make it work um, Yeah, I don't have nothing against scoped weapons, but those ones in particular Vacuum tube AR is very similar to the candy corn because it's really decent nature damage If you're locked in a water zone, you can make it work It's chain lightning is super strong and you can pair it with first shot Rio to make sure that those first six shots crit uh, but it is locked to nature, and every time I tried it, it, it didn't blow me away. I'll put it up here with, like, the Bundle Bus and the, and the Hammer Crush. It, it's pretty good. Crowd clearing single target, it, you'll have a fun time, but it costs energy cells, and it's it's locked to nature. So, in a water season, it's okay. Uh, it's okay, but it's not anything that'll blow your hair back. Uh, Pulsar, Vitatech Pulsar, pretty not great. Low D tier, maybe with the FAMAS, I don't know, whatever. Wraith is another weapon where my opinions changed. So, last time, I think I put it in low B tier. I have since tried this weapon the way it was meant to be tried. This is a slow fire rate, high crit chance, high single target damage, low accuracy weapon. This weapon is designed to be shot slowly and accurately. Now that crouching exists, that kind of buffs the Wraith. I've never loved the fire rate, and I stand by that. It's single target, long term damage output is pretty bad. It's not that amazing versus a mini boss. In my video where I tried it, it was okay but the element wasn't in its favor so that's that's a fair point to make if you're running this thing with totally rocking out and the correct perks you know like crit rating double crit damage reload and just making it work you got affliction on this thing it's an a tier weapon i was wrong you know i've used this since then i gave it a second shot and with totally rocking out i i cannot stress how much the team perk was helping there but hey totally rocking out exists this is something we all have access to to ignore team perks when i rank these weapons is to just be um naive for no reason with a team perk that we can all get with vouchers or by playing the event it's super strong again it just doesn't have the accuracy or the crowd clearing to be s tier but it's up there with the floor flusher uh it's it's not the best ar in the game like i refuted in the other video but it's solid. Mercury LMG is a pretty mediocre weapon. They nerfed it with the same nerf to the bundle bus where the five hits in a row cause an explosion no longer does that crazy amount of damage. That's years old change and it's energy only. So it's like okay damage, but like not really. Maybe it's like the lowest of C tier, I, I think is maybe where that's fair. Um, maybe mid tier, but this, this range down here is not very competitive. So mid C tier, I guess. And finally, uh, this is just kind of where they were ordered. I did not mean to titillate you until the very end of the video, but I guess if you're still here or you skipped ahead, thanks for hanging out. The brand new weapons. So the Primal AR, I made a video on it doing impossible damage. This thing hits for a ridiculous amount. And from what I understand, Epic might leave it alone. So as long as it is randomly hitting for six times more than it should, this thing can be an A tier single target weapon. What that means is this thing has abysmal crowd clearing. It can't do anything to crowds. Its accuracy is garbage. <laughs> and the fire rate really leaves something to be desired. So you need a war cry. You need totally rocking out. This weapon needs help. Maybe even a fire rate perk. Um, I will put it in low A tier because it's single target damage impressed. But I... Um, I don't know. And Epic seems to really be enjoying these low fire rate, single target damage weapons because the Pulse Pounder is very similar to that. It is not a miss monster 
you know, destroyer. Maybe regular Miss Monsters, but Smashers it struggles with because of um because of uh, long term damage output is is not its forte. And I think this one's medium ammo. See, something that a lot of people assume is that a sci fi looking invasion weapon would be an energy weapon, but I actually think this one takes medium ammo, which is kind of a buff. You know, I could just do this: Control F Pulse, and then save us all some time. Yeah. So if it, yeah, it's medium ammo. I put it in the thumbnail. So that's actually kind of a buff. The fact that it's not burning your energy cells i would say i've seen varying loadouts like when you hip fire this thing it shoots faster and when you aim it shoots slower so i i think if you use it right and you're patient and you, you take advantage of its strength it could be a decent b tier weapon maybe put it right above the vacuum tube ar it's a fun spice pick if you're bored one day is it super strong a tier new threat for st no no but i'd say the new weapons are generally pretty good and there you have it. That's my 2023 updated list. I know that some of these rankings are affected by the mood as a recording, but I really have, as shown, tried out a lot of these weapons and uh, I've gotten new opinions on them. And as loadouts and metas change and things are found, this might change again in the future. So if you ever see a 2024 list or beyond, you should definitely click it and see what I'm thinking because um, yeah, that Blackout AR went from like, what was it? Low B tier, unimpressed. And I stand by that. This weapon on its own is not good, but if you abuse that six perk, one of the best weapons in the entire game. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Twitch link down below. See you guys in the next one. And, uh, goodbye. This is what my SMG tier list looked like in 2022. A couple of things have changed. I have used the typewriter a bit more since then. I've also used the pepper sprayer a bit more totally rocking out, balancing out that damage. I don't know. I've embraced totally rocking out a bit more than I used to. I used to like using Blast in the Past for consistency. I used to like to rank weapons based on their own performance. However, I've embraced more totally rocking out builds that really make weapons viable when they otherwise wouldn't be. And we'll see how that shifts things around. And the Durr song has also catapulted itself to the absolute number one position for a few quirky reasons. Funny enough, I still think the weapon itself is C tier, but the six perk is so freaking strong. We'll talk about it later. It'll probably be S tier, but we'll see. We'll see. And finally, we've gotten two new SMGs. We got the primal SMG and the shooting star. So we'll be talking about that throughout here. Let's get into it. Let's do a 2023 update. So S tier is something I take quite seriously. S tier SMGs do it all. They do really, really good damage. They can crowd clear as effectively as an SMG can. And as you probably saw from that last tier list, a lot of SMGs are S tiers because most SMGs are really good. <laughs> so let's get a couple of easy ones out of the way. I'm gonna put the Walmart Spectre in F tier just because it's completely obsolete. It might have the damage of a B or an A tier weapon, but with the Silent Spectre being an upgraded version in every way, I see no reason that this should ever be used Used by anybody and then i believe there's another smg down here that should be in f tier but we'll just get to that later i guess because i'm not immediately spotting it and it's not that important so bobcat is first and foremost it's an s tier smg it is really good uh fire rate really good perks you can have double crit damage crit rating or you can have crit rate crit damage and reload it has really good perk options fire rate damage it's got the whole package it's a very slow reloading weapon but the mag size is 50 so believe it or not if you slowly reload load with a mag size that's 75% bigger, it's actually the exact same long-term damage output as a reload perk. I like reloading quickly and getting back into the fight. That's a different topic altogether. People are buying Jake stuff on Twitch. Link to that down below if you guys have... Has purchased one chest. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I've been trying to mute my alerts on stream, but they keep getting through somehow, and uh, I'm just gonna roll with it. So, Dirge Song. I guess we're talking about it early. This thing, again, the weapon itself does not hit that hard. It's like a B tier weapon c tier maybe i stand by its rankings last year however if you guys have not seen my black metal boom builds it is very very strong you can activate it with the right loadout to do millions of damage and it is ludicrously strong it can sit down power level 250 smashes with ease it is far and away one of the best weapons in the entire game if you take advantage of that six perk boom very very nice very very good damage typewriter i think was like a b or a c tier last time i looked at it but again i've braced totally rocking out i've used this weapon a bit more it's nothing exceptional but it's pretty darn good i'll put it in like low a tier i, I think it's actually pretty solid and i know that totally rocking out can make any weapon good but that's kind of my point like when you put a weapon in c tier that tells a noob that you should never touch it but like honestly typewriter did okay it performed really well and i had a great time with it and i 
had a whole video on that and it was awesome. That was like the, the three different ways to use a typewriter video. Uh, quick shot, Founders Quick Shot and the uh, Thrasher are actually kind of the same. So I've said it many times in many videos that the Thrasher is the best SMG in the game because it is. Uh, technically speaking, the Quick Shot out damages it. However, <laughs> I'm going to be saying this a lot in this video. The Thrasher has Affliction. Affliction is stupid good because it does really, really high damage. It used to do very low damage way back in the day, but they buffed it years ago at this point where it does pretty okay damage. It's like a, a amount of, it's like hitting an enemy with another bullet once per second and that's enough to finish off a lot of enemies. So with an SMG, you can just spray across a crowd and stop shooting and most of them will be dead after a little bit of time. We're assuming there's no nurse or healing death burst. In normal scenarios, they'll all be dead. So Affliction does great single target damage. It functionally gives you great crowd clearing damage and that extra damage output is very, very useful for attacking multiple enemies at once. The quick shot burns through ammo. It's got the same 25 mag size as the Thrasher. It's got that special six perk, which I can actually show in game here. I kept the game open for a reason. Founders quick shot should be in the F section around here. Yeah, there we go. So hitting an enemy grants uh, fire rate and damage, or no, reload and damage, uh, stacking up to 25 times. So if you are laying into a single target or a bunch of enemies, I guess, you can reload so fast that you can maintain that bonus damage. And it is really, really good. You can see that I was trying it with triple core damage here, but it didn't last. Triple core damage is really tough. I am honestly in favor of the Thrasher, especially because the Thrasher is accessible. Th the Thrasher could be in regular missions, which it is very often. Uh, it can be in your llamas. You can get this from a mission reward like a like a legendary schematic from the storm king or whatever the thrasher in my opinion is the better weapon overall but the quick shot does have the highest dps of any smg in the game again we're sort of excluding the dirge song there because it's six perk is weird <laughs> it's like it's literally calculated as not the weapon doing damage it's the six perk being overpowered it's a weird situation but it's fun the hemlock the hemlock i think i've put this in s tier every single season however Affliction is just busted strong, and when you are comparing the Hemlock to all of the other SMGs and their capabilities, I think it's high A tier. Its single target damage is great, its perks are awesome, its damage is solid, its six perk, the key one is like the five hits in a row causes an explosion. Most enemies aren't surviving five hits, and that five hits, if you average out the 70%, is only like a 14% damage bonus, it's really not that much. It, it helps. It's like a high A tier. I, I really don't think it's proper S tier anymore, but it's still a good SMG. Now the lightning pistol. I might be changing my mind on this. I don't like to look back at the old tier list. I'm going to take this from a new fresh perspective. This weapon has a lot going for it. It is, if you didn't know this, one of the highest DPS SMGs in the game. I think it's right below the Monsoon and the Blastatron Mini. Uh, but... Okay, let's continue with the positives. Uh, and then it can also have chain lightning, which is really, really good for multiple targets. That's super solid. And, and then the, the negatives. It is locked to nature, which is not the biggest deal. In my opinion, water seasons are fine. In fact, if you go to the spreadsheet, this might be a flashbang situation. So if you're in a dark room, get ready. Uh, close your eyes. There you go. So the yearly content timeline shows us that for 20% uh, of the year in the wintertime, we have a water season. So I, I don't like ruling weapons out just because they're single element, but it shoots energy cells at 13. 15 and a half cells per second. This is by far the most expensive SMG on this list. So it is S tier damage that you are absolutely paying for. So I'm going to put this in low A tier just as a rounded opinion. If you're rich and don't care, use it. I promise you, you're going to love it. It's an amazingly strong weapon, but it's so expensive that I, I have to put it in A tier just for a well-balanced perspective. Same thing with the Monsoon here. Uh, this is the fastest firing SMG in the entire game. Yes, I know double fire rate Bobcat exists. The Monsoon is still faster. It's like 28 cells per second. No, not cells, uh, small ammo, but but you can also put a mag size perk on this and like assault ammo recovery. So the mag size is functionally in the hundreds. It's beautiful. S tier DPS. I believe it's the highest DPS SMG in the game. However, because it fires like a minigun, it needs to spin up for that damage and its accuracy isn't that great. So it's a super insanely strong weapon that has a really slow spin up that makes it kind of not viable to use unless you really want to have fun. So I'll put it in low A tier because it's super subjective. I think when you're committing to a pocket minigun build, it's fine. You know, just take the spin up and enjoy the damage while you're at it. But um, it's it's not instantly ready like all these other SMGs are. Somebody putting it in low A tier, but it's still an amazing weapon overall. Uh, the Ratatat is awesome. The Ratatat is 
just a Swiss Army knife of an SMG. It can have um, each attack. Here, actually, let's just show it here. So I think it ha it can have each attack like stat. Here, just sort by subtype just to get us all the SMGs into one place. There we go. Let's just read these out together. Here we go. Each shot fired gives you extra damage, crit rating, and affliction. So it can be whatever you want. Do you want to hit super hard? Do you want to afflict a bunch of enemies all at once? Do you want to up your crit rating at the same time? This can have, as you can see, three crit damage perks. So you can run triple crit damage on this, plus Beetle Jess in the lead, and Toy Rock and out and it's like 680 percent crit damage or something it's ludicrous insanely insanely versatile weapon it could be any element it's got all the options and the damage to back it up it is a fantastic smg this is archer's favorite i'm calling him out because he put together a lot of these tier lists for me i didn't even ask him to do it i promise you he just he helps me out a lot and uh, he's got a very informed opinion as well i don't value it as high as he does the damage is fun and it's there but there are other weapons that don't need so much setup i don't know this is a weapon that if i took a, se a second more serious look at could maybe shift in the tier list so maybe a 2024 update or if you guys see me covering these weapons in the future stay stay tuned subscribe for more but i'm going to keep this in like mid s tier for now maybe below the thrasher above the bobcat this is largely subjective it's an amazing smg regardless anything in the s tier or even a tier is worth using if you're a new player taking advice here just uh, understand that the uh this is a fun one so the riptide i know we have three weapons with the same stats. The Riptide is a Scavenger Ratatat. I'm sorry. It's a Scavenger uh, Thrasher. It has the exact same stats in every way, except that it's cheaper. And for whatever reason, no other Scavenger weapon in the entire game does this. For whatever reason, it has a 30 base damage instead of 31. <laughs> it's a clone of the Thrasher that's more cost effective while being technically less damage, which drives me crazy. So... If you're a new player concerned about expense, it's probably the best SMG in the game. I think that little bit of damage is is just, it kills my OCD not to use it. So like, it's really good. It's everything that the Thrasher is, but it's just technically less damage and that drives me crazy, but I'm gonna put it right below it for now. Now, moving on to a classic, the Silent Spectre. This has been my favorite SMG for years. I love the look, I love the feel, I love the sound of this silenced weapon. I love that base 20% chance to crit. With one crit rating perk, you're up to a 48% chance to crit. It has all the amazing perks that I've praised before. It doesn't have triple crit damage, but look at how you can run this thing. You can run a crit build with almost critting every other shot. Affliction and damage to afflicted, which is a great combo. This damage to afflicted is kind of another crit damage perk you do typically want a crit damage perk instead but this is great too it can be any element i love it i love this weapon so much it is not the top tier damage i understand that um but it's still pretty dang good so i'll put it right here next to the bobcat they've been neck and neck for years i know that this looks like it's low s tier but these are all so close that it's you know like you know this might look you know going from 10 to 1 but this is really more like going from 100 to 95 <laughs> like it's it's not that far apart from the top of the S tier. Dirge Song excluded. It's its own story, as we know. But yeah, very, very, very good SMG. All the options you want. Super fun weapon. Pepper Sprayer. This weapon, I've praised it many times before. It has a super fast 1.5 reload. By the way, with a reload perk on the Silent Spectre, you're getting down to a two second reload, which is great. This thing has a 1.5 before a reload perk. It's got a 34 mag size, which is higher than the average 30. It's got a decent fire rate, 10.8 is standard, I believe, I think is what it has. Let's double check that since we got the game open. Yeah, 9.9, .9. it's a little less than usual, but that's okay. It's super accurate. It's got pretty good range, 4,096 is more than most. You can see Silent Spectre has 3584, uh, Thrasher has the same one. It has long range, accuracy, everything. It has the perks that you want. This weapon is perfect in every way but damage yeah it's just really low damage compared to every other smg now two things can help with that one you can supercharge it granted that doesn't really count as a bonus because you can supercharge anything but you can supercharge it to make up for the sum of that extra damage and if you run totally rocking out you will crit plenty to make this weapon super viable so it is like low A tier, just because of that damage being not enough to be viable in the 160s, but it's low S tier with a totally rocking out team perk. And because with enough time, we all should have access to that team perk. If you run it right, I'll, I'll bump this up to low S tier. I think this weapon has been uh, kind of cast aside by the community, but 
I think it could come back. This is another this is another weapon that sh should be featured on my channel, the video, because I think this weapon with, you know, a crit damage lead and totally rocking out, getting all the bonuses that everything loves, every weapon loves, I think S tier is where it should be long. Uh, the uh, same can't be said for this one, though. The the Trinity. I don't remember where I put it last time. Low A tier. It's got the damage, but it's, it's low accuracy. It's burst. It's kind of like everything the pepper sprayer is, but like a little worse. I don't know. I've never loved it. This is just my opinion. Low A tier because it's not bad, but it's not great. Uh, Vitek Blazer is an easy D tier. It's so many energy cells and such low accuracy with such low damage that I, I just can't suggest this to anybody um if you are broke and you need a quest done in ventures go for it it is an smg it will do damage but oh it's bad it's bad viper has s tier dps but it's accomplishing it through fire rate and it's super inaccurate it's it's good damage it, it will kill the enemies you'll be reloading all the time and it will be burning through your small ammo and your durability will vanish alongside it but it does kill the things. I'll put it in low A tier. Uh, I don't need to explain much more than that. Uh, it's a starter SMG. It's exactly what it is. It will absolutely do the job. I completed some quests on Ventures with it today. But you don't want to use it uh, much longer than you have to. Blast Drum Mini is the highest DPS SMG in the game, I believe. Might be right, uh, right behind the Monsoon. However, because it's locked to energy, it is functionally doing 75% of its total damage to energy enemies which is a big deal. It's also got super low fire rate, uh, so there are quite a few things holding it back. You can see I've supercharged mine. Uh, by verdict of me supercharging it, you should say that where I'm about to rank it, I, I promise you it's a good weapon. If I supercharged it, um, oh, that's not universally true. I've supercharged electroshock rifle, but it's a good weapon. It's just like mid A tier. I'll put it um, maybe above the monsoon uh, because it's readily available. Even though it's energy, it's got the expanding ring of damage and it's got the seven projectiles on crit with the sci-fi six perks. It's pretty strong. Uh, it's just uh, it's expensive to use and it's uh, it's energy. So it's tricky to recommend, but it's very, very strong. Now, our two new SMGs. So the Primal SMG is a low accuracy, high damage. It used to be nature only, but uh, actually I'm glad I waited to record this because they can be any element now, which is super nice. It can't be energy, but it could be all the elements that matter and that's really good. So uh, it's no longer limited by that, but I, it's just not that amazing damage. I'll, I'll put it in B tier because the damage drop off. Okay, let me say this. Its damage is amazing up close, but your accuracy is abysmal and its damage drop off is noticeable. It, it just has to be in B tier. Um, all of these weapons can do similar damage to the Primal SMG without much of the drawbacks. Um, the, the DPS on this weapon is, is quite good. It's just... Um, it struggles. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to put it in B tier, but uh, it's not worth throwing away. I recommend trying it out if you ever get a copy. Shooting Star has, like, A tier damage, kind of, but you are scorching through energy cells again. Do I have a copy of this leveled up? Let me see this real quick here. It is 13 and a half energy cells per second again, which is as expensive as that lightning pistol. And... It um, overheats super fast. It has bugged six perks. If you have two of these, you can swap back and forth between them. You kind of have to dual wield them, but it's really hard to use. So it can be A tier performance if you're using two of them and managing the heat capacity correctly. It can do really well with crack shot in the lead because it never technically has to reload. You can work for A tier damage, high A tier damage, but... It's practically a C tier weapon due to all the other reasons mentioned. So there you go. A bit more wordy than last time, but hey, I've got more experience. I'm older, I'm wiser. I've tried these weapons out and I'm excited to try a few of these in the future. So uh, yeah, stay tuned on the channel for more. Hope you guys enjoyed. Comment down below what you thought. I know I put a lot in the A and S tier, but as I said earlier, a lot of the SMGs are really strong. So I mean, I don't want any noobs to get the wrong idea. Plenty of these are super good and you should definitely give them a try. I'll see you guys in the next one and uh, thanks for watching. All right, back with another updated tier list. Today we're talking about shotguns. We've got the obsolete ones listed here. I have had some people get annoyed for some reason that I'm putting like blue and purple weapons in F tier, but like when a legendary copy exists and you can get these from base game missions and llamas, it just makes these completely obsolete. No matter how many Jigglypuff alerts are spammed in my stream chat, link down below, it's not going to make these weapons ever 
worth using other than short term as a newbie player. So these are set aside. Ben's War Cry, getting the video started. This is the tier list from over a year ago. I have changed my opinion on a couple of these weapons, and we have a brand new weapon that came to the game. So yeah, let's go over this list again and uh, see where the new list lies. I will tell you, I don't think some of my top decisions have changed. I recorded a shotgun top 10 list, and it almost identically mirrored this list, but you have to wait for that video to see how that goes. So we're going to start in alphabetical order, I guess, whatever's at the top. So Backbreaker is a really bad shotgun. Its damage is not great. It's semi-auto, which is awesome. It's got a nice spread on it, which is not too bad. And its damage did not save it when I tried it. And I'm just, uh... I'm just going to keep it in the D tier. Black Metal Shotgun, the uh, Black Drum. I used to praise this weapon. I put it in my original top 10 weapons list, and I think it even made the second one. But every time I've used it since, I just cannot figure out where I got that opinion. So I'll, I'll put it in B tier. It's a solidly damaging shotgun. It does okay. That Black Metal 6 perk does help it a little bit. Not as much as you'd think. I've been there. I've tried that. It's not quite as strong as the Black Out of the Dirt song. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you should check out my Black Metal Boom videos. They are definitely explosive, but it's not as much as, uh, as it should be. Double Boiler. Easy S tier shotgun. This thing has, I believe, the hardest hitting base damage of any shotgun in the game, and its Steam Cloud does a tremendous amount of crowd clearing damage. Very strong weapon. Very, very good. You should absolutely try it out. The thing is a monster. This is another uh, F tier weapon that's just one of the lower resolution, not resolution, lower rarity ones. This is the Dragon's Might, I think? It's a shotgun that just shoots a bunch of um, fireworks. If you put, like, double mag size on this you will shoot so continuously that it actually like stops the animation and just keeps shooting it's a fun weapon it's silly it's locked to fire it's damage is okay i've had some people defend it but i think c tier is where it should be totally cool to pull this thing out like run toy rocking out buckshot raider of course and just have some silly times with it but i um i, I don't think it should be anything but there uh is this the uh yeah this is the deconstructor yeah it looks like the piston spitter but this is the uh, the Dragoon. The Dragoon, I'm going to pair them up. I recorded a whole best perks on these, and I put them all in the same video. The Dragoon, was this the legendary variant? Oh, my God. I actually don't remember which one is which. I'm going to go and look into this and check right back in with you guys. All right. Yeah, I paused that video just because there's a lot of weapons here, and I didn't want to waste too much time. All three of these weapons, the Dragoon, the Thunderbolt, and the Old Smoky. The Old Smoky and the Thunderbolt, by the way, same exact weapon. It's just a scavenger variant over here, so it's just cheaper to craft. They are functionally the same. They have widespread crowd clearing. They do fairly decent single target damage, but they're not incredibly effective. I've had a lot of people comment defending these weapons. I've tried it. It's it's not that amazing. I think low B tier is fine. They're pretty good crowd clearing, good knockback, which is not that helpful. And uh, I don't know. I, I float between C and B tier, but I uh, I don't think these weapons are that great. Deconstructor is F tier, actually. It's, its damage is, is not great. Fire rate's super slow. Six perk doesn't save it. It is uh, pretty bad for a founder's weapon. This is a weapon people paid money to have, by the way. And it's, it's really, really not that great. Unlike the Ground Pounder, one of the best shotguns in the entire game. High fire rate, great single target damage. The reload is awesome, especially if you pair it with Chaos Agent. The thing is a monster. The perks are incredible. Fantastic shotgun. It is my version of a perfect shotgun. It's one of my versions of a perfect shotgun. The double boiler, super different weapon, not semi-auto in the same way. I guess it is like boom, boom, but then you reload. Um, very different play styles, enormously strong weapon. Same thing with the Hustbuster. It's slower firing, significantly higher single target damage, and uh, higher mag size. It's a miss monster mini boss killer. I pull it out no matter what loadout I'm using just to do continuous damage versus mini bosses. Very, very strong. Helium Shotgun. I actually tried this weapon out. It's pretty not great. It's got like A or S tier single target damage, but it's uh, a slow firing projectile that's locked to energy. So I don't know. This one's totally opinion. I've had people rate it very highly. I think it's similar to the Black Drum where it's got the damage, but not too much else. Black Drum's a little bit better than that, but Helium Shotgun, it did not impress me. I feel like with how tricky and quirky it is to use based on being locked to energy as well, I, I think C is fine. I did not see myself ever using this weapon again, and I might have recycled the schematic after the video. It was pretty not great. I put the Long Arm Enforcer in F tier last time. I have used this weapon since then. Stay on the lookout for 
for a video on my channel. I got paid $50. I was kidding, by the way, but he's, he did it anyway. I got paid $50 to try this weapon out. It's not necessary to pay me to try stuff. Just leave a comment. I'll do it for free if I'm in the mood. But I was not in the mood, and I, I jokingly gave him a number, and I tried it out. It's actually really good. It is a... Here's what's what it's got going for it. It's a base game weapon, so anybody can pick up this weapon almost any day. If you just head to Fortnite DB on most days of the week, you can get a long arm enforcer. Not every day, but most days of the week, it, it might be available. Which makes it really appealing in terms of ranking. And its single target damage was nothing to write home about. Like, it wasn't... It wasn't like the double boiler damage, but it was pretty good. It was eliminating mist monsters pretty effectively. Its crowd clearing was abysmal, but honestly, that's fine. If you pair that with like the Maverick or the Pulsar or another weapon I forgot to rank uh, down here or the Big Shot, it's it's OK. It's all right. So, yeah, I'll put it in like low A tier and I'm surprised in myself to go from F tier to A tier is probably the highest rise I've ever seen. I might have put it in F just unknowingly, but it's pretty solid. Maverick is another A tier weapon. It's a uh, pretty good single target damage. I was getting about a million plus crit with like double crit damage and toy totally rocking out. So it's not the hardest hitting shotgun. I never said it was, but it's got crowd clearing and not just crowd clearing, but very good crowd clearing. This is one of the few weapons that pierces shielder bubbles. So you can eliminate a whole crowd from the outside of a bubble with affliction damage, taking the whole time great weapon and because it's so similar to the big shot I'm gonna put them in the same position the big shot is like a slightly different version it does not have affliction and it shoots two shots same as the other one um, but it also has access to all the different elements but it has a fancy six perk so without the affliction you have the 44% extra damage to elemental targets yeah a little Ben's war cry on that one it is pretty strong it's very very good can also go through shielders i think it's like a better maverick but maverick has affliction which is also nice i don't know i don't know maverick's base game which is super nice you can get it from regular missions llamas whatever uh big shot maverick very very good at crowd clearing pop shot easy s tier this is a fast firing fast reloading high damage shotgun it's very similar to the ground pounder and the Huskbuster. in fact at their base stats, all of these weapons have functionally the same DPS. Kind of cool. Uh, once you start getting perks involved, the pop shot, I run it seriously crit rating for damage mag size and reload because of the way that mag size works on shotguns it actually functions like a reload perk because you have 75 percent more pellets and that works for all three of these weapons by the way uh any weapon any shotgun that reloads one shell at a time because you have 75 percent more shells your time to reload is over the course of every shell so the ground pounder for example has a five second reload time so to speak but that's for all 12 shells so by increasing your mag size by 75 percent without changing your actual reload speed it actually reloads 75 percent faster and you have more ammo on hand to eliminate something like a charging smasher or a mini boss and if you pair that with chaos agent you don't even need to hit the penalty for reloading all that time it's awesome so that's why if you run a reload perk and a magazine size the pop shot reloads faster than it shoots it's really really fun very strong super good weapon i think it's just below the other two because of its lack of range but it can also have affliction very good weapon pulsar i got a lot of flack for not putting this in s tier and you know what now that I've thought about it, I've been able to look at your guys' comments and think about it more thoroughly. I'm right. It's not that good. It's a great weapon for crowd clearing. It does great single target damage. It can be energy, which is kind of a drawback, but it still hits hard enough to be all right. It's just not going through shielders. You can go through riot huskies. I've gotten so many comments. Oh my God. If one more person tells me that like if you aim above them, the edge of the ring hits it, I'm going to lose my mind. I get it. It can be okay against riot huskies, but it's still not going through bubbles and it's still not getting any bonus damage versus elementals because it's locked energy it's a pretty mediocre crowd clearer i would put it below these other ones it's it's all right uh, it's all right and the woofer is basically the pulsar but like weaker pulsar is more expensive with energy ammo but the pulsar uh, is also just better than the woofer in almost every way but the woofer uh, can have elements which is kind of nice uh, they kind of go back and forth but uh, i'm gonna keep the wolf right below it because i feel like that makes sense yeah pulsar is good is it s tier no it can't do everything if you bring this weapon up against a smasher you're gonna realize why it's not s tier all of these weapons up here can handle smashers and crowds crowds are very important see with these semi-auto weapons you just hit enemies one at a time and affliction will just polish them all off as you go and you're doing tremendous amounts of damage great great stuff all around uh this is a weapon that i forgot the name of pummeler i think i've used this adventures once with random perks i've never had anybody really fight for its defense and i have i've had so many other weapons i play around with i don't know 
I feel like it's pretty okay single target damage. It was surprisingly good. I don't know if it's going to get the long arm enforced treatment in the future, but I think low C tier is fair because of its slow fire rate. Um, and hydraulic weapons are typically lower damage, higher impact. So I'm, I'm not too sure this weapon will surprise me. A little jigglypuff there for you guys. Really need to mute that while I record on stream, but you know, it's just Twitch chat having fun, I'm sorry. So yeah, I think low C tier is, is where that should be. Room Sweeper, and I always like to pair it with the Tiger Jaw, uh, were S tier before. I don't know, I don't know. I think I'm gonna keep them here. I don't wanna just fabricate this video by putting them in A tier artificially. I think these weapons really are amazingly strong. The Room Sweeper is super high fire rate, lower single target damage, but generally a higher DPS than every single shotgun in the game. Yeah, highest DPS shotgun in the game, by the way. But uh, I actually know that it's from a spreadsheet. I just wanted to be dramatic. It's really, really good, but you will be chewing through ammo and affliction goes a long way in the crowd clearing uh so it's a really 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 good shotgun but you gotta be careful when you use it and the tiger jaw is same thing it, it's not quite the actual damage note on that by the way it's highest dps point blank because of this weapon's very quick damage drop off and widespread inaccuracy it's um it's never gonna be like all the time top dps but it's still very strong tiger jaw is a lot more mellow it doesn't quite hit as hard but it's got that longer range narrower scope and it can have a magazine so you're reloading all at once i used to run mag size on this it definitely benefits more from a reload perk if you are running mag size make sure you're using chaos agent to take advantage of it it's also got affliction it's got great perks tiger jaw is basically the slower firing harder hitting version of the room sweeper both of these are super strong shotguns and um I think S tier is very deserving. I don't know where I put the Staccato Shadow. I didn't want to reference this list too much, but I put it in mid A tier. Yeah, it is. So I've embraced Totally Rockin' Out a lot more. And I feel like the Staccato Shadow is a real contender. It is very good. Um, it can pierce through huge crowds of enemies at once. It can have crit rating, double crit damage, and reload, which is just a dream setup. And uh, its range is amazing. It basically functions like an AR. If you run this thing with the perks I just said and totally rocking out, it used to have lower single target damage. I need to mute that so much. <laughs> used to have lower single target damage, which which always threw me off. But if you run totally rocking out, it completely ca completely uh, cancels that out. It's honestly like a high A tier weapon. It's a very very strong weapon. It needs too much help to be S tier. All of these weapons can do that amazing stuff without help. I would never pull this out versus a mini boss unless I was running a totally rocking out build and a shotgun build with buckshot on the lead but if you give it the help it needs it's really really good very 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 strong shotgun um here we got the oh my god i'm forgetting ah this is the staccato no it's the stalwart squire i got it it's a very hard hitting single shot shotgun so you are reloading after every single shot it's fun hits like a truck Super impractical, low A tier. Stampede, forgot about it earlier. It is functionally identical to the Huskbuster, other than I think the Huskbuster has slightly less impact, but I know that the Huskbuster is more efficient. The Stampede is kind of obsolete because of the Huskbuster, but it's not like low rarity obsolete. It's like actually as good. So because the stats are the same, I'll put it up in S tier, but you should never use it. Just use the Huskbuster instead. The bear, very similar to the long arm enforcer. Uh, huge single target damage, very good versus miss monsters. I don't know where I put it before. I wanna just ask my old self. Yeah, high B tier, yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't know. Low A tier, kind of the same thing. This is the kind of area that's so gray, it just depends on mood, but yeah, it's pretty hard. Very good shotgun. Um, I'm just gonna leave it where, where it is. Browbeater, it hits like as strong as the bear, but way harder. Um, if you use it right, it's very much so S tier damage, but it is like a miss monster hunter. So I can't quite put it in S tier because it doesn't do everything, but it hits like a truck. This area right here is very up to interpretation, whatever you value. Like these guys right here are crowd clearing. These guys are single target. I'll just leave it how it is, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't know. See, this is what I mean by mood. Like, it just floats around. Like, I feel like high or low B tier, A tier is not how I'm looking at this. This is high. This is low. This is high. This is low. Because they're com you cannot compare a crowd clearing weapon like the Maverick to a hard single target weapon like the, the Browbeater. Browbeater hits tremendously hard. With a nice crit, you will one shot a power level 250 blaster easily. This thing can sit down a smasher in two shots. It is remarkable damage. It's basically high A tier. If you skip to the end and didn't watch this part, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> but anybody who listened to me talk right there will understand that I'm kind of splitting A tier. Um, and uh, this is the br brush? Brush off. Something like that. Um, 
very similar um hard hitting single target weapon i'll just put it up here with the others it has that 44 percent damage to elemental targets as all the art deco weapons have pretty good pretty good uh nothing special i've explained single target weapons enough today but yeah two-step is a pretty good shotgun it's all right it goes ba-boom 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 that's why they call it the two-step it can be any element it's kind of fun it's not insane damage but it's exactly kind of fun i don't need to spend too much time on it i'm getting a little tired here but i think low b tier is perfectly fine it's a good shotgun don't shy away from using it but you got a lot of better options uh vacuum tube shotgun is locked to energy and it's super expensive it's um really really good in a nature zone almost s tier damage maybe a tier damage but because of its limitations i'm going to put it in low a tier in the right element it's a tremendously good shotgun but uh you kind of need to make sure it's a water zone or a nature zone so i'm gonna keep it there vader tech disintegrator uh very similar to the helium shotgun it's got a little bit of explosion damage it's not so bad i've had some defenders in the comments and it's all right damage but it's so expensive, it's like three energy cells per shot. You can do, like I said, I have to consider expense a little bit because you can do its damage with less work. But I think it's the only explosive shotgun that I can think of if you don't count the Dragon's Might. It's not really explosions, so I don't know. I don't know, I'll put it in low, high C tier. Um, yeah, and then the Dragon Fire was forgotten from the list last time, but eh, it's very similar. Like, Lock to Fire, pretty good semi-auto shotgun, maybe mid C tier. I don't really know exactly because it's never been good enough to get too much of my attention. Every time I tried it out, it was super low range and super low damage, and I just was like, yeah, that's enough of that. And of course, our brand new weapon. The Primal Shotgun. This weapon has no crowd clearing whatsoever and very weird six perks. So no affliction, which really hurts it, and no explosive six perk. But it does activate Frenzy, which makes it shoot faster, makes you move faster, or you can have extra 30% damage to targets that are above 85% health. That's basically like having Preemptive Strike, the team perk, as a six perk. So it's pretty good for those reasons. However, it's um, in practice not that strong to like sit down miss monsters easily uh but kinda if you give it some help a totally rocking out you can but it's at it's outer lack of crowd clearing uh, really hurts it and i say affliction matters a lot because with shotguns and your limited ammo capacity you do not want to be shooting an enemy two or three times instead of once or twice and affliction allows you to polish them off like the brow beater you can just have affliction so you go boom for 90 percent damage and then move on to the next target while they die that's huge when you're reloading every five shots this weapon can't really do that so i said it in the video i think high b tier is fair it's very similar to the black drum shockingly because it's kind of a reskin but um it's not amazing and i think that's where our new shotgun's gonna lie so yeah, like I said, um, the list hasn't changed much at all. I think there are a couple of these that are in somewhat new spots. I, again, th this is a list where there's a lot of gray area and way too many Ben's War Cries. What is the cooldown on that? <laughs> and I swear it was less than that. Uh, I might have to fix that. But either way, hopefully the alerts weren't too annoying. I have fun on Twitch. I'm sorry. But uh, there's a new list. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, subscribe. Watch some more videos. Check them out on, on the end screen here. I'll see you guys in the next one. We're going to be ranking bows today. I'm looking at a coral reef because it's beautiful and because I'm on light mode unapologetically. So, a couple of things to talk about. Stink bow exists. It's a thing now. It's in the game. And I figure, since I've been updating some of my tier lists, some of you guys have been enjoying it, hanging out in the stream with me, Twitch link down below, queuing up some Ben's War Cries, I figured I would take a look at my old list. And this is the final standings. And I thought about this and I thought, okay, obviously our S tier bows should be where they are, but I think I've really come around to the cloud burst. I think some of these weapons are a little too high, some are a little too low, some can't be low enough, and the stink bow exists as well. I'm seeing like seven good reasons to take a refresher. So here we are. Thank you, Archer. He updated this before I even had the idea to re-record this. Let's rank the bows in Fortnite. So there are 13 of them now, and they're honestly kind of amazing. I also want to give a little PSA to everybody that I have been experimenting with a lot more Toy Rockin' Out builds. I've embraced it a lot more than I did in the past. I used to use Blast in the past in a lot of my videos just for consistency, and I never really valued how strong Toy Rockin' Out can be. And something else I've discovered, if you guys have seen my double crit damage, uh, Vacuum 2 Bow, Xenon Bow, and, and Powder Keg Bow videos, I have found that Rabbit Raider is like hugely better than Farah in the lead. She is amazing, excellent hero. If you're running bows, she needs to be in the build somewhere, but with the crowd clearing capabilities of the cloud, Burst, Xenon Bow, and Vacuum Tube Bow, not necessarily in that order, 
Stuttgart Farah doesn't really need to be in the lead. Three instead of five, 20% instead of 60 is not that bad. And she actually, seeing as it's a crowd clearing perk, does nothing for you in terms of single target damage. So, little PSA. You should still check out my best bow loadout video down below if you guys want to see some suggestions. But nowadays in the modern era, Rabbit Raider and Toy Rocking Out is kind of the way to go. Still should have Farah in support though. Also, little, little factoid for you. Saurian Might, even without Blast in the past, actually on average does more damage than rabbit i'm sorry um skull ranger i call her thick skeleton lady because i always forget she gives you 15 percent uh for five seconds after reloading that's great use it if you want but this on average if you're full health should actually be more damage than her so you know it's just kind of a, a way to optimize your bows all right now that we've optimized our loadout let's rank the top bows in fortnite i figured all that was relevant so i hope you enjoyed that all right Let's get the S tier out of the way. I will use this just to set a standard for how Beast ranks things. I take S tier very seriously. I've been doing this with my updated tier list and I'm doing it here today. In my opinion, S tier weapons can do it all. There is no holding back whatsoever. S tier weapons have amazing single target damage and amazing crowd clearing. I don't necessarily factor cost effectiveness for every weapon. It's kind of pick and choose depending on how important it is. Like, I know in my Rockets tier list, I famously put the uh, Deatomizer quite a few stages lower than you'd expect. And that was intentional because it's crazy expensive and outclassed by everything nowadays. Think of one thing the Deatomizer is best at. I'll wait. It's not clearing buildings. It's not the Storm King. It's nothing. It's nothing. So anyway, that's what S tier is. Best of the best, it can do at all. And that's actually why I'm kind of moving the Cloud Burst up. I've used it a lot since then. Its damage is kind of crazy. It hits really hard, does amazing single target damage. That Steam Cloud mirrors its damage. So it's basically hitting the enemy over and over and over and over. And if you're shooting through a tunnel or a choke point up a little bend with like a little ramp, naturally speaking, you can get those scenarios a lot. It can choke down, er, choke down. It can lock down a choke point very effectively, and it's really, really good. And don't, don't let me forget that steam cloud can activate Farah's perk on top of it, and so can the, uh, so can the chain lightning. I know that this was added to the game where her branching. Actually, I think I have a. You know what? I'm gonna go find the picture. All right, I went upstairs and got this off the refrigerator. So what they added to Farah is that when you hit an enemy, it branches five times, but when you chain lightning, each and every one of those activates her perk as well and that applies to the steam cloud from the cloud burst it's just a super strong weapon well deserving of s tier and uh, that's why i re-record these videos it totally happens that i overlook some of the qualities of these weapons and as time goes on my recommendations change so let's go back from the bottom stink bow at the very last i'll show you i'm gonna make you guys wait for where it where it should be so Boombo, I believe I put this in C tier last time. It is the only bow. Uh, okay, so the stink bow, we don't run it with reload by option, but the Boombo is the only bow in the game that doesn't have a reload perk. However, it can be any element, which is kind of a big deal. You'll notice two of these up here can't. And its explosion is pretty small, but it's pretty strong. So I feel like if you're running this with, you know, crippled, toy rocking out, you're giving it all the help it needs. A tier is pretty generous, and I, I think that's fair. It's actually pretty strong. It's it's pretty slow firing, but it it it's worth the wait. And uh, yeah, I, I see AS four seven in chat saying it can be four crit rating. Never ever do that. Double crit rating is never recommended, even if you're running Zenith. It's still not worth it. Uh, Compression Burster is kind of like the Boombo, but less damage and more impact, which is not very useful in regular missions. I'm gonna put it down in C tier. I'm not trying to refer to my old list as much. I don't really think it has a place in the current bow meta I, I don't know i don't know i think c tier is very fitting so i also put a few of these bows scrapshot night owl and instigator i put these i think in b tier last time they are essentially single target only seeing as the compression burster does have a bit of crowd clearing capabilities and the single target damage is okay with these weapons i still think c tier is where they should be now the scrap shot and the night owl or no, no 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 the knights what is this the knights something am i completely forgetting that's usually a bad sign if i forget the name of a weapon that's a bad deal but i believe they are uh, mirrored of each other and this is driving me crazy i'm gonna look this up i'm gonna go find it aha it's the night fire so the night fire and the scrap shot i believe are identical it's just the scrap shot is cheaper or it's the instigator but i believe these weapons have very similar stats so i'm tearing this very specifically the compression burster has some crowd clearing these other ones don't the instigator when you charge it up all the way and hit an enemy it takes more damage from other sources for a while which can be really helpful but it doesn't work against mini bosses which is like the only time you'd want that and it doesn't work for the storm king which is the only other time you'd want that so you're really not 
doing much with this. Smashers go down super fast nowadays with the Plasmatic Discharger, and regular Mist Monsters are usually dying in one hit from these kinds of weapons, so I just don't see any use for that whatsoever. And, um, yeah, I feel like the other ones are so similar that it doesn't uh, make a difference. Uh, Night Owl, we used to put it in F tier. I can't really go lower than that, and same with the Love Song. Both of these weapons are slow firing. Well, I guess they're average firing, I guess, but their draw speed's a little slow, so they're slow firing, high single target damage, some of the hardest hitting in the in the game in terms of bows, but it's there's no crowd clearing whatsoever. And it just sucks. I, I feel like, okay, the Night Owl can crowd clear. If you get a couple of eliminations, it activates the six perk, which booms a bunch of enemies. And as we've found with some of my recent videos, you can do a ton of damage with that. It's still not enough to justify it, and I, I don't love it. I don't love it. So I'll put it above the love song, to be fair. I know Archer was being silly, putting a whole Night Owl tier, but I just, I don't think it's that strong. Powder Keg. I put this fairly low, because the explosion um, is, is not that great. But again, I've embraced Totally Rocking Out a bit. Maybe that's cheaty, but it can be any element. It can have reload. It can explode in a wide area. It might not be doing a tremendous amount of damage, but it's a lot of enemies at once. It's okay. It's all right. I don't think it's seriously an A tier weapon, but if I refer last time, I think it was kind of high C tier. I, I think high B tier is fitting nowadays. I think it's uh, a lot better than I, I thought, and it's still not amazing, but it's definitely a contender if you're looking to just have some fun with a bow that you haven't used in a while. Vindertech Seeker, I believe, is locked to energy. It is the hardest hitting bow in the entire game. If you charge this thing up, it'll have those three uh, extra arrows or two extra arrows, whatever it is, and they will seek towards the target and do a ridiculous amount of damage. It's a lot. It's a lot. However, no crowd clearing. You can hit several targets in one shot, but you're going to have to wait for it. And I just, I don't know. I just don't think it's that amazing. However, it's tremendous single target damage kind of carries it. I believe I placed it in A last time. I don't really see that it's better than the powder keg though so i think low b tier it's being carried by its damage but i don't really know that it warrants much higher than that so here we are ben's war cry timed well thank you chrissy twitch link down below once again come hang out with me while i record the stink bow where do we put it now in my video, I titled this, uh, not clickbait, I really did do 4.7 million damage. That is a quirk with the primal weapons. Primal weapons will just randomly do a ton of damage. When I introduced the primal AR, I made a video saying that this is impossible because it was. We were doing all the math we could and it was topping out at 500, maybe 600,000 damage. Then we were hitting for 1.6 million. What? And that's true with all the primal weapons. Their first shot just does a ridiculous amount sometimes. And that happens on the bow. However, it happens rarely. So it can have S tier damage where it nearly, oh my God, if 4.7 million was 4.9 million or 4.8 and a half million, it would one shot a 250 power level smasher and that would be nuts. That would be nuts, but it doesn't. And it's stink cloud does a ridiculously low amount of damage. So, yeah, it's really good single target damage. I honestly don't think it's better than the powder keg. It's crowd clearing is technically there. The stink, the stink cloud exists and it does damage to the enemies around it, but it's not a lot of damage and I feel like it needs to be buffed. So to future proof this video, if it's doing steam cloud level of residual damage of the cloud, S tier easily. It could be any element besides energy. That's fine. S tier easily. If it's stink cloud does half the damage that it that i would hope that it has still a tier if that stink cloud is actually eliminating basic enemies and chunking mist monsters top of a tier maybe still even s tier just to future proof this video with any future updates however in the current state of the stink cloud i'll be fair and give it mid b tier um i don't think it's in tight competition down here so i think b tier is fine it's single target is good there were plenty of times throughout this video i showcased where i was absolutely one hitting uh, 250 power level uh, not, not smashers not miss monsters i got there blasters takers flingers they will die very quickly but uh that's not the only thing you need. So there you go. There's my 2023 update to the bow tier list. Very well timed as we just got a brand new bow in case you didn't hear. And uh, there it is. If you guys want to see more of these, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. And if you want to see other stuff, just vote with your views. Because I know you guys have been really enjoying these updated tier lists. And it's kind of fun to revisit some of them. Not all of them. So I've just been sorting my most popular and kind of like checking some of these boxes. And uh, if you guys want to vote with your clicks, that's enjoyed as well. So yeah, if you want to see more, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Twitch link down below once again. I'll see you guys later and uh, take it easy.
Welcome to my 2024 updated snipers tier list. I'm gonna tell you right now, we all know it, snipers are some of the worst range weapons in the game. Very much outshone by the bows, which are technically classed as snipers, but are a completely different thing. They have their own tier list already updated in 2023. My opinions have not changed since then. You should definitely go and check it out. Tier list, playlist is in the description down below, but I'm older, I'm wiser. I've definitely tried out a few of these snipers since I last recorded, and the third rail has been added to the game. So yeah, might as well just get right into it. And I'm also gonna try to remember to uh, compare my previous tier list to my current one. And in fact, I shouldn't like not be staring at this tab because it would influence my decisions all right fresh new list let's get into it third rail let's just start with the big boy so s tier is something i take very seriously an s tier weapon needs to have amazing single target damage which pretty much nothing on this list is going to struggle with but also really good crowd clearing that's where this list struggles and the third rail is fun fact the hardest hitting weapon in the entire game there's no comparison but you're taking three seconds to charge up that one shot which i believe can pierce but it's not enough so it's got to be an a tier weapon anything that can hit for 50 million damage is going to be a tier but that's all it can do you can pretty much one shot 160 smashers with minimal setup but man if you don't crit or if you don't hit that headshot or something or if people do things with the stream alerts that i'm gonna have to mute i do record these on stream twitch link down below if you ever want to be a part of it i'm gonna double check whatever that redeem was and make sure that person doesn't get scammed so moving on moving on from the third rail it's an exciting interesting weapon but it just can't do everything so yeah blast around 9000 easy s tier this is a sci-fi weapon pew 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 really good single damage uh really good crowd clearing with the six perks like expanding ring of damage and the exploding shots if you hand this to a defender by the way archer found this out or he popularized it i don't know who found it out sorry if i'm giving wrong credit there but he turned me on to the idea that you can hand this to a defender and the cooldown for those exploding projectiles is not there so if i hover over the uh blaster drone, i should have done this right away uh yeah every four se i'm hiding it right there yeah every four seconds is when these uh can activate and on a defender there is no cooldown so it's just Every single time it crits, it's a really strong combo. Really good use of your energy cells there. Uh, Steampunk Sniper, I think, is pretty good. Um, the Steam Cloud, Steampunk, Steam Cloud, <laughs> Sixberg does a lot of damage, and that can really help with crowd clearing. I don't know how well that pairs with a sniper, though. I'll put it in high A tier uh, trepidatiously, but. It's, uh, yeah, it's a sniper. There are so many great ways to activate the Steam Cloud Six perk. The uh, Duet is actually kind of good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. And the uh, Double Boiler Shotgun is ironically better than the sniper, I think, because the Double Boiler Shotgun hits like a freaking truck, and it activates that Six perk, and shotguns are generally very strong. So in this game, it is uh, potentially fair to say that the shotgun might be a better sniper than the sniper. Just you know, food for thought. Triple tap, I believe. No, is this a crank shot? Triple tap has the bigger barrel. Yeah, it's right down here. So the crank shot is a fully auto sniper. Boom, 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 boom. A lot of people like to use this for uh, Sub Zero Zenith because it can crit, it can freeze enemies. Super cool. It's uh, pretty strong. It's fully auto scoped. You know, it's A tier. Yeah, it's nothing, not 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 good enough at crowd clearing or single target. It's it's mediocre both but still on the higher end for snipers i will say that this is a list comparing to other snipers it might be like a c or a d tier in the scope of the entire game maybe b somewhere in here but for snipers i'll put it in a tier crescendo really really good single target damage with a long wind up and dancing enemies oh man it's not even that good single target damage either i'll put it in b tier i'm being maybe generous today maybe i'm in a good mood i am recording this hungry so you'd think i'd be angry but i don't know b tier i think it's fair wasp really bad um wasp and uh dragonfly are pretty much the same weapon i believe really you know semi-auto boom 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 but like not that much damage when you boom i'll put it in d tier it's not useless it's not f tier but uh oi it's down there although is it really worse than the crescendo oh man maybe i'm getting mean again am i just gonna put this lower because honestly i have never used the crescendo to any effectiveness i'm putting i'm putting an f i'm putting an f now, the uh, <laughs> Victor in chat said, how dare you, it's a W. I moved it down to F bef after uh, before he said that. So we'll see what he says next. The uh, dragon's what? Is it the claw? What kind of dragons is this? I know that it shoots a projectile that sticks to the enemy and then it explodes. It's actually pretty all right. Uh, I've seen it used with relative effectiveness. I'm gonna actually go ahead and uh, maybe put that in low A tier. It's actually pretty, it's not insanely strong. I haven't made a video on it. It's it's 
somewhat mediocre, but it's more usable than you might think. Kind of interesting. The uh, Death something. Man, some of these snipers, Deathwing, have not been used in so long. I tried this out because somebody said it was good, and then it was not. So, yeah, D tier. We're just going to keep it simple. All the semi-auto snipers that don't do enough are going to be in D tier. In fact, I can just save everybody a lot of time. Every single semi-auto sniper that doesn't quite cut it is all going to be down here. This is just the D tier range. If I'm wrong about any of this, you can go, go ahead and uh, correct me. I am always happy to record an updated video when I was wrong. It's super exciting for me and the viewers because I get to cover up a blind spot and enjoy a fun weapon, but boy, I've given some of these a try. I've seen Tsunami in footage and it's just not there. It's just not there. You know, I assume the scavenger variant is this one, considering the model is nearly identical. It's actually pretty cool. Now, the Midnight Stalker is a black metal weapon, which is... Um, Interesting. The black metal weapons have those six perks that boom for a ton of damage and do some extra good damage, but it's not uh, that much on the sniper, I heard, so I don't know. It's probably uh, not going to save it since I it didn't impress me on the shotgun and other people gave me uh, similar reports when they were testing this weapon. I'll put it in B tier. I remember it being pretty good, but nothing exceptional. And the neon sniper is interesting because the neon sniper is the only weapon in the game that gives you a thermal scope that can shoot through walls. Now, the Xenon Bow has come and joined it in that scenario where it can shoot through walls, and the Ghost Pistol is also very similar, but it is one of a very few weapons that can shoot through anything. Absolutely anything, and it's the only weapon that has that thermal scope to see through walls. Really, really interesting. It's not a ton of damage, but when you consider the fact that you can just stand safely back and shoot through things, it's really good to hand off to defenders, and it's using energy cells. So it's low damage and high expense keeps it in A tier, and it's lack of crowd clearing obviously keeps it in A tier as well, but definitely a weapon you don't want to forget. It's an excellent utility with that thermal scope. Obliterator is S tier, so the way that it gets its group damage is in twofold, well, maybe three. Two, in the fact that it shoots through enemies, so it has a bit of piercing, but the headshot eliminations cause an explosion is really strong in the obliterator, because if you <clears throat> aim for the head, you'll do a ton of damage, and 30% of an obliterator headshot is a lot. <laughs> that will more than certainly kill the enemies around it, and I said three, kind of, because the obliterator is an excellent defender weapon. Because it can shoot through walls, which is really useful you can hand it to a defender and it'll shoot through the walls, meaning you can shoot through the floor and defend your base and you can put your defender up and away and it'll safely protect your base. It's really, really strong. And because defenders shoot a lot, um, <laughs> it kind of uses the weapon way more than a human would and that actually kind of gives it crowd clearing. I know it's kind of a cheap point, but it's also the third and weakest point. That's why I'm mentioning it last. So it's got a ton of utility. It can shoot through walls. It can break walls. It can break those bushes that don't get destroyed by pretty much anything else besides the discharger, but a single heavy bullet from the obliterator is cheaper than a 30 energy cell discharger. Obliterator is great. Obliterator is great. It's really up there with one of the best defender weapons, and uh, I like it for that. So we have two weapons that are the same here. It's going to be the Spyglass and the Old Betsy. Spyglass has a scope and more range. The Old Betsy doesn't. It has 10,000 range instead of 25,000. These are two of my favorite weapons ever, because up until about the 108, maybe nowadays with higher power level 116 zones, it can one-shot blasters and takers, and it's really satisfying. Super great weapon to use for that but it falls off in the end game. So this is like a high A S tier weapon if you're just starting out, but in the end game, it's completely obsolete. It's an F tier weapon. So because of my bias, and this is my list, not yours, <laughs> I am going to put this in high A tier because I respect the utility of the early game players. Because you know what? Here's the thing I've been uh, thinking about recently. I rate weapons based on how good they really are, which the way that I can do that is using it in the end game. When I'm as high a power level as I can be, or really anybody can be, I'm two superchargers off of max power level as of recording this, and I'm in the highest zones in the 164 players, shooting the highest basic enemies that you see, which is 250. I know that Frost Knight exists, and Horde, and Endurance, whatever, but... Suffice it to say, I like to test weapons in the best that they can be, and when they fall off in the endgame, I feel like it's a bad weapon. But, in the early missions, things are in flux. You can make your Obliterator 108 when you're facing power level 80 enemies, and that's true for every single weapon in the game. That's why so many people love Teddy builds, even if it doesn't hold up in the endgame, because... 85% of your journey is in lower level missions. I consider like 124 and below to be lower because that's my perspective. And a lot of the times you're running in ventures. Now you can't choose your weapons and ventures, but that does shift my perspective for abilities. So if for 80% of your journey, this weapon's in insanely good, 
maybe that's worth considering. It'll fall off and fail you in the end. But <laughs> hey, for the journey, it's actually was my first 106 weapon, and I do not regret it. It was obsidian. I regret that. But uh, yeah, I skipped on some of these uh, semi-auto weapons, so I'll put that in there as well just to save us more time. These are all functionally identical. You're doing the same thing when you use them. Ralphie's Revenge. This is S tier damage with this thing double headshot physical nowadays weapons got boosted and I haven't looked at it in a long time I used to say that it was a six times headshot multiplier nowadays it is ten times the damage to aim for the head which is ludicrous with a full team and a correct loadout where I don't I don't have sniper perks in this build that I have set right now I was recording my pistols tier list in the same session so I've got calamity here but with the correct build you can hit for a million on every single headshot two things though uh, one, headshots are hard to hit, and two, uh, it's physical only. So you're going to be doing half a million to elemental targets, and that's not a lot in the endgame. So really fun weapon. You can have a ton of fun with the Ralphie's Revenge, but its limitations keep it in B tier. Super Shredder is a really good single target weapon and uh, pretty bad crowd clearing. I think it's an easy A tier weapon. It's a sniper. It shoots shotgun shells. That confuses a lot of people. I get comments every time I talk about it where they're like, oh, it's a shotgun. It's in the wrong tier list. No, it's a sniper. It just shoots shotgun shells. Really good. Single target. Actually, boost that thing with Toy Rocking Out. You'll do millions without much setup at all. It's super fun. The Cleaner hits for the... Uh, second highest damage or is it the very highest damage a sniper can hit i'm not sure where things are at nowadays but it has a <sighs> unskippable three second cooldown meaning it has a three second reload but even with the chromium ramirez in the lead to reload faster or chaos agent to reload quicker it's still firing 0.3 times per second forcing you into a three second cooldown between shots that makes it functionally useless it's it's terrible there is no amount of damage i mean ask the third rail that justifies a weapon like that the third rail just hits that much harder that it's worth a tier it can actually do things to smashers but the um the cleaner just does not uh, one hit smashers the same way it's tough but mm, it is what it is i know these weapons are so similar and they're four tiers apart but i i hope i explain that clearly uh, the third rail is the strongest weapon in the game. The, the cleaner is just a hard-hitting sniper that doesn't hit hard enough, unfortunately. Uh, takedown. It's not like these other D-tier weapons. I've used this weapon somewhat recently. Pretty good. Pretty good. It's not S-tier. You know, it's been deserving of a video since it came out. I... I am primed to make a video on this at almost any point. I'm just always working on like 12 videos at once. So it's it's on my list. This is a strong weapon. Uh, I don't know where it ranks in A tier. I'm kind of being random about where I'm putting things up here, left to right, but strong weapon. Seriously, try it out. If you're a little bored and you want to try something out, give it a go. The three round burst, uh, this weapon here, triple tap, is kind of like a worse crank shot. That's kind of it. It's a three round burst sniper it, with a scope. It's basically like an AR three burst with a scope. Uh, B tier, uh, unexceptional damage, but um, yeah. Vacuum tube sniper has like S tier damage and the chain lightning, but it's shooting 13 energy cells per second. So the accuracy is pretty bad and it's a bullet hose. A tier I think is fair, but it's so expensive and impractical to use that I'll put it in high B tier. There was once a time when I took out the crank shot, the vacuum tube sniper, and one other weapon I can't remember where I tried to make a Zenith video with not bows, and they all performed so terribly that I scrapped the video. <laughs> I scrapped the video. So yeah, Vitterdeck Jolter is not a semi-auto weapon, but it's really low damage. It's again, just slow firing, not enough damage for what you're doing. F tier is, is pretty fair. Then the, uh, damn, the pizza I just ordered before recording this is almost here. Okay, pizza day. Yemen, uh, Yeoman, whatever, super terrible weapon. It does a lot of damage to single targets, but it's a projectile. So wherever you're aiming in the scope, it's going to it's gonna fall. You, anybody who's played BR knows the difference between hit scan and projectile uh, weapons. It is projectile. And it's, again, just not enough damage for the skill and luck, I guess, that's required to utilize it fully. It's, it's bad. Zapatron actually hits like a truck, very similar to the Super Shredder in its, in its overall damage output, I believe. This is experience talking. I haven't double-checked those numbers, but it hits hard. But it's a slow-firing uh, charge-up weapon that costs energy cells. I think it's high... I'll put it in C tier. I'll put it in C tier. It just it, it hits way too hard to put it lower, but it shoots too slow to go higher. I think C tier is where it belongs. And the uh, crossbows are literally S tier. I'm not kidding you. You can double crossbow these, like switch back and forth between them both, and they pierce enemies. They do crazy good damage, and they have excellent perks. They are 
very good. If you think I'm kidding, give them a try or check out my crossbow video. You might be surprised. All right. Now we're at the fun part of the video where I get to compare. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, it's similar but different where I get to compare to my previous video. I am on light mode So uh, sorry in advance, but here we go Now uh, let me actually full screen this so I can compare a little quicker and then do that. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do Let's do F. There we go. Yeah, so here's what we got looks like the Blastatron and the obliterator and the crossbows are exactly the same Looks like the neon sniper. I said these are random looks like my a tiers are all pretty similar the Vinatech Jolter I don't remember how that got to a tier. Maybe I hit really hard with it and Skewed my opinion, but I remember that being oh man I guess I'm a little random about that I'll admit some snipers are super bad and I don't use them very often So it results in a situation where my opinions get a little random based on my Experience like I've used this a little bit in ventures since then and I'm kind of more familiar with how bad it could be But it's never been a good weapon. I don't know why I put that in a tier. I think I'm I think I'm doubting my previous self uh, Yeah, wow the pla I'm sorry the Zapatron is in a similar position literally almost the same lineup. This is Okay, I guess I'm pretty consistent with snipers, but a little bit of difference here and there So uh, yeah, that's just why I record these updated videos. I'm older. I'm wiser. I do try the weapons out uh, Unfortunately, I can't try out every single we weapon in the list uh, Every single year because there are so many weapons in this game and so many areas of the game I try to focus on that uh, Obscure snipers are pretty low on my priority list. Same thing happened in the pistols video. It's just how it goes So if you guys enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe, you know, like the video comment down below if you disagreed I'm sure you did uh, Stay tuned for more tons of videos coming out and uh, be happy to see you there Welcome to a 2024 updated tier list for pistols. This is my oldest, I think, weapon guide from like two years ago or like tier list that I haven't updated. So we're just going to get into it. All right. Pistols are not the most exciting class in the game. Pistols and snipers are kind of the bottom two classes. Stream's getting a little excited. Yeah, I do record these live on stream. So Twitch link down below if you guys ever want to be a part of the fun. I actually do community tier list sometimes. That's not what I'm doing today. This is just my list. But if you ever want to be a part of the vote, Twitch link down below. So pistols are are definitely in the bottom ring, but there are actually some really fun ones. The Dirge song's insanely strong. I don't think I knew that back then. I have my old list up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hide that in a different tab, and we'll talk about how I compared to my previous list. You know, how have I changed in the last two years? Dirge song for sure has uh, definitely shown some merit. Same with the Coco 45, Bald Eagle. There's some really good pistols in here, and a new one with the Primal Pistol. So yeah, let's just start. Now the Bald Eagle is a weapon where you can switch off back and forth. It's really good accuracy, really good damage. It's got a bit of a damage drop off, but if you do double deagle, super fun. I actually have a video on my computer that I haven't uploaded as of recording this or edited yet, but it exists. It's a fun weapon. You can have a lot of fun with it. I'm not biased enough to say it's S tier, but we are going to be ranking these weapons based on pistols, okay? In the scope of the game, it's probably a C tier weapon. I mean, there are some insanely good weapons in this game. As for pistols go, it might be A tier, it might be S tier. In my opinion, S tier weapons, this goes for everything in the game, S tier weapons have really good single target damage and really good crowd clearing. In my opinion, I take S tier very seriously, an S tier weapon can do everything. And the Deagle can, if you've got aimbot accuracy and a recent bug was fixed where headshot eliminations cause an explosion, actually does pretty good damage nowadays. It was bugged to do basically nothing for a while. If you have that perk and your accuracy is insane, you might have S tier performance, but nobody's perfect. I think A tier is perfectly fine. Basilisk is a really good single target weapon. It's okay. Um, I haven't used this weapon in a long time. This could easily be one of those placements that adjusts based on how I re-familiarize myself with weapons. That's why updating these tier lists every single year, I missed 2023 for this list, but almost every year is really good because revisiting these weapons and getting new updated opinions changes a lot. I feel like I remember it being kind of an A tier weapon. Actually really good single target damage. That's what you're going to hear a lot with pistols, but pretty not great, uh, you know, crowd clearing. So yeah, uh, the I don't think this is a scavenger weapon, but the bolt bolt actually has better pierce than you might think. It can it can cleanly cut through a bunch of enemies at once and afflict them with affliction. So I'll put that in A tier. It's honestly more useful than you might think. If you ever want to have a fun time, use the bolt bolt. Now, the Coco 45. I don't, I gotta put something in S tier and I think we're gonna start with the Coco 45 because it can pierce targets with great perks. It can have triple crit damage. That actually spawned my fun 160s playlist where I've got over 140 different loadouts in that series now. I found out that weapon could have triple crit damage. You put Battle Beat, or I'm sorry, uh, ba Beetle Jess in the lead with a Toy Rock and Out build. You can crit a ton and you're doing 705% crit damage at the same time. Really fun build. 
if you set this weapon up properly, it can ping back and forth off the walls. I soloed a mini boss. I don't think a pistol that can solo a mini boss should it should be anywhere but S tier. But eh, maybe the Deagle could do that as well. So that, that can't be the only criteria. But I'm saying it takes a lot of setup, and for a pistol, it's S tier. Now the Dirge Song is going to be the strongest weapon on the entire list. I have shown this a lot on my channel. It's, uh, wait, you're saying Bolt Bolt is the legendary junkyard pal? I don't think that's true. Somebody in my chat is correcting me, I think, or they might be making a joke, but I'm pretty sure those are completely different weapons. But seeing as I don't look at pistols that often, I kind of need to familiarize myself. Oh, you are totally correct. Thank you for letting me know. Wow. This is what I mean, you guys. Some of these pistols are fun. The Bolt Bolt is fun, but like, you don't look at them enough and then you just sort of forget what they are. And now that that's been mentioned, I feel like the junkyard pal should be in the lower tier if it's even on this list. Um, it's a weapon that Epic has put in people's inventories to punish them before like they replace every weapon in their inventory with the junkyard pal seems like the lower rarities are not represented on this list so we'll be ignoring that for now but good to know but yeah their song is with the right loadout able to dish out millions of damage very easily i've shown this a bunch on my channel you should definitely check out like dirge song boom build or blackout boom build you'll find those videos easily this is an insanely strong weapon like this is s tier across the game not just pistols dragon's breath on the other hand i have had a lot of commenters tell me this is a very very good weapon I don't know about that. I've heard the exact opposite from just as many other people. I'm going to put it in C tier. We're going to leave this one in the air. I'm going to tell you honestly, I am not, I have not brushed up on this weapon recently. So you could see a video on that sometime in the future, you know, subscribe for more. The Duelist is a weapon that is a six shooter. This is not the Jack's Revenge, by the way. That's over here. They look very similar. Couldn't be more different, though. The Duelist is a pirate pistol, shoots six rounds. Pretty good single target damage. I feel like it's pretty much there with the basilisk uh pretty good single target you know it doesn't do a ton of crowds i think it had a, i think it has headshot eliminations cause an explosion which is helpful in fact if we go to the schematics find a pistol which shouldn't be hard because i supercharged my dirge song sort by subtype we can find it pretty conveniently oh are the oh Oh, the Dirge Song's an SMG. Oh, I'm so glad I caught that. Oh my God. You can go and delete your comment now. The Dirge Song used to be a pistol and Archer made this list. You guys can go politely tell Archer. No, don't, don't bug him. This is <laughs> an old mistake. The Dirge Song used to be a pistol. It was classed as a pistol long ago. Nowadays, it's an SMG. I'm now seeing Twitch chat was telling me. Well, screw it. It's still very good. You should still use it. It's definitely in the wrong list, but okay. Back to my point. <laughs> the okay let me find a an actual pistol here that we can uh use to find i'll, I'll pause and come back all right duelist so headshot eliminations can cause an explosion that's really useful on pistols because it does high single target damage <laughs> aiming for the head makes you breathe weird and then you can just explode everything around it and then the uh, headshot eliminations boost christian's sword that's meant to be paired with the corsair and affliction is actually a really really strong six perk so yeah securely in the a position falcon again i have used this weapon it seems like a worse bald eagle but i've really only been stuck with it in ventures I, I could be totally wrong it's so similar to the bald eagle i don't actually know how it compares again i just haven't brushed up on this weapon so i'm going to put it in b tier because i've used it a little bit of ventures it's okay it's okay freedom's herald is an exploding weapon um it's the uh, america new year's firework weapon it's fun a little bit of group damage uh maybe a tier again i need to brush up on pistols because most of the time pistols aren't worth brushing up on but eh, you know ghost pistol shoots a slow projectile that goes through walls pierces enemies does a lot of damage it's locked to energy it's a little hard to use but it's an a tier weapon I i'd put it in the high a tier it's one of the better pistols in the game but it is rather limited in that slow projectile speed so it's, it's tough to control uh ginger blaster easily s tier damage oh wait it's locked to physical so it's doing half to elemental oh and it doesn't have any crowd clearing oh boy yeah i think b tier is fair because this thing can rock a smasher or a mist monster physical this thing hits like a truck can have triple crit damage i had a lot of fun with that in my video but if they are elemental it's useless if there's more than one of them or a crowd of them it's useless it is unfortunate so i'm recognizing the potential of this weapon but putting it where it belongs it's six perk if you're curious drops the gumdrops they heal you it's a fun gimmick but it's nothing that amazing now what is kind of is the haywire storm i have not featured this in a video i have not used it seriously but it is a fast firing semi-auto pistol that is actually really good i don't know if i'm confident enough to put this in s tier for example i really need to like actually run this weapon uh but i did run this with a real build somebody redeemed it on stream one time and damn it was actually pretty good i surely didn't use it with slowed snare did i oh my goodness well 
yeah, affliction on that goes a long way, as it always does, because I've said this in a million videos, videos and I'll say it in a million more. If you use a pistol like this with a affliction, you just tap one enemy, one enemy, one at a time, and every single one of them will chip away, and you can basically kill basic enemies with one shot each. So, yeah, playstyle, my personal playstyle puts this in the high A tier. I'm not sure about S tier, but it's got potential. Seriously, it's a, a decent pistol. You should give it, a, give it a shot. Hot Mix is a weapon that should be an SMG, in my opinion. It shoots a... Uh, shoots fast, it pierces enemies, it shoots two bullets at a time, it has a couple of different elemental options, and it has the six perk where they can dance, which makes them stop attacking you. It's actually a really, really powerful combo, and since we're talking about pistols here, I'm going to put it in S tier. I think the crowd clearing and single target is sufficient enough to put it in the S tier position, and of course, making enemies dance uh, basically makes you invincible because they stop shooting you. I think the Jackal, is that what that's called, or is it the Vendetta? I Man, these are pistols that I have never you, like, I was aware of them when I was a brand new player, and oh my god, do I not even have a copy? Yeah, the Jackal. So, I assume that's similar to the Haywire Storm. I just, um, I can't know. I can't know. I'm gonna put it in, like, low A tier just to be safe, but uh, I'll admit, I have not brushed up on this weapon in a while, and if you think I should give it a shot, comment down below. I am perfectly willing to admit when I'm unfamiliar with a weapon, because you guys can vouch for it, and if I'm missing something here, that's how I find out about weapons like the Ranger. Uh, in the AR tier list, the Ranger was like C tier. In my brain, it's high A tier, low S tier. I, I totally changed my opinions, and that's why I update these videos. Jack's Revenge is crazy fun. I want to put it in S tier so freaking bad, but I'm sticking to my rule. It is high a tier big single target damage it can if you set it up properly with like calamity in the lead here you know what let's do this together because i think it's worth showing off all right so here's the setup i have a couple of people that join me off the stream high power level players i have calamity in the lead for 60 percent damage then i've got uh ranger deadeye in support for 17 percent damage and i gave it two headshot perks and a damage perk look at this at first glance, you might think that my headshot bonus is terrible. I'm only doing 27,000 more. But what's actually happening is this is 1,321,000. It is actually clipping off that seventh digit because it doesn't uh, display properly. So with headshot, physical, double damage, and the loadout I showed, plus just a couple of high-level teammates, I am consistently doing 1.3 million damage without even a crit. That's why I want to put that in S tier because it's a really, really hard hitting weapon you can sit down power level 250 miss monsters in one shot which is really good but you are shooting one shot at a time and you're reloading every time and it's it's not not quite s tier but high a tier for sure you can have a ton ton of fun with that and a commenter said the 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 jackal was bad i'm gonna believe them i'm gonna put in b tier again up in the air on that one uh same thing with the judge i'm just gonna skip over quite a few weapons that are fast firing single target that aren't super great these are all very similar weapons they're a little slow firing semi-auto not really bringing anything interesting to the table what else can i just add to that list real quick space invader it bounces around a lot which makes it interesting but the strength of the weapon does not really make up for it so low b tier i guess i'm not really ranking this too seriously i guess it has pierce maybe high b tier it's not a very strong weapon unfortunately mouthpiece is a weapon from the art deco set it has that extra 44 percent damage to certain elements that is really useful you can do a lot of extra damage but it's a lot like the ginger blaster it does really good damage against the right target and that's it no crowd clearing no usefulness against uh, normal targets it loses a lot of damage and that's kind of the problem piston spitter is like these weapons but really bad i'll put it in d tier it's not f i've used it in ventures it if you point it at an enemy, it does kill them. <laughs> it works, technically. On that note, I'm not sure there's really anything down here that can be F tier. Even like the Vindertech Blaster. You know what? That'll be F tier. That's a scoped weapon that even with like triple crit damage or double whatever I tried, I tried really hard to make this weapon super strong. I was aiming for the head. I was hitting my shots and it was not killing big targets like it was not good at all i tried the judge or the cyclops i mean the cyclops from the spy weapon set actually did kill targets i'd put that in high b tier i guess you needed the scope so it's kind of like a little sniper pistol that's not as strong as a sniper i could be wrong about that it's been a lot of years since i looked at that weapon and it makes me excited recording these tier lists because i'm forced to discuss weapons i haven't thought about in a long time and it's uh it's fun it's fun um yeah it's something i want to i want to consider looking at in the future and uh another spy weapon is a turncoat that i actually recorded a video on again on my computer 
unfinished. It'll be up on the channel someday. A uh, really good weapon that has really good perks, insanely good perks, in fact. If we just uh, minimize this, go back to Fortnite real quick here. Oh, no, I closed it. I'll be right back. You can see the perk options are insane. Affliction, crit rating, double crit damage. You can't really get better perks than a normal weapon. You have all the different elements, really good. It's a solid weapon. It is a pistol. <laughs> but with Totally Rocking Out active, it might be S tier as far as pistols go. It shoots fast enough, and with the Affliction perk and insanely good perks in general, it can crowd clear. It actually functioned as a primary, and I was rather impressed. So, yeah, a semi-auto going into S here. I feel good, because I, I mean that. Plasmatron. Uh, this one feels like an SMG. Is this really still a pistol in this game? Okay, great, because this thing never has to reload. It's one of those weapons. You pair it with Crack Shot, and you'll have an excellent time. It's a sci-fi weapon, so it's locked to energy, but it's got the expanding ring six perk, the exploding projectiles six perk. It's a sci-fi weapon, so it's, it's quite good. And, um, yeah, a little bit of a slow projectile, kind of like a big bubble gun big bubble gun uh just shoots bubbles but it you know pop 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 pop, pop, pop. you can hit a whole crowd uh you know shielders and ride huskies will shut you down that's the same for a lot of these weapons <laughs> except for the ghost pistol i guess but yeah super fun weapon it pairs really well steamroller is a weapon i've heard good things about in fact actually i'm assuming as a steampunk weapon it has the steam cloud six perk and i don't even have a copy leveled up goodness i have some blind spots i'm not gonna lie some of the weaker weapons in this game as a content creator there are hundreds of weapons in this game you are kidding me i don't have a copy of this weapon or am i being blind right now well, all right, that's something I need to look into. Jeez, I don't even have a copy of this weapon. Man, I could imagine the title of that video would be me researching this weapon. Regardless, Steam Roller with the Steam, Steam Cloud 6 perk, I've heard really good about the 6 perk. I, uh... I'm trusting the opinion of AS in chat. I think this is probably an A-tier weapon. I know the damage is high. I know it's single target damage is really good. The Steam Cloud is really good for crowd clearing. This could be S-tier, but I'm not going to blindly put anything in S-tier. I'll put it in A-tier, maybe high A-tier, right, right above the Duelist, where I feel like this weapon is worth some investigation, but... Um, yeah, I can't do that right this second. And then the Storm King's Onslaught, obviously, us here. Um, it struggles against, obviously, Shielders and Riot Huskies, as usual. Every pistol has that blind spot, but it's a fully auto weapon. It's basically an SMG with aimbot, and the highest base crit chance of any ranged weapon in the game at 25%. With one crit rating perk, you're critting 53% of the time, and it has the perks to take advantage of that. An excellent weapon. Excellent weapon. A lot of people really don't like it. I get it. You know, with shielders, bubbles, and shielders and bubbles, you're not always, you know, sometimes it goes for the, the enemy, not the shielder that's boosting it. So you don't have as much control over this weapon. So I'm weirdly leaning towards putting it below the Plasmatron because they function very similar, but the Plasmatron gives you a little more to work with. It's a very strong weapon, though. It's a Storm King's weapon. No surprise there. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So Paper Shredder. Oh boy, I've been having my head talked off about this weapon for a while. Archer, obviously friend of mine of the channel as well, he has been champion championing this weapon so much. It's basically like the uh, Freedom's Herald where it shoots and explodes and it does apparently a lot of damage. That's outside of my scope. I'll put it in low A tier before I can investigate further, but very... Apparently strong weapon something you might want to try out tiny instrument of death. I have tried out you guide the rocket and it explodes That is slow firing hard to take advantage of super expensive to operate and not enough damage to justify it I'm gonna put it in high C tier a lot of people are gonna disagree with that I know that one in fact by putting it in high C tier It's like below the B tier weapons So maybe because of where I've placed these I'm forcing myself into mid B tier, but it did not impress It's just um yeah, yeah. Jiggy Melon says that this is a worse version of Tiny Instrument, you know? This just means that if I want to take pistols seriously in the future, I'm going to have to try out a lot of these. And I don't love recording a tier list where I'm uninformed about 40% of the list, but a lot of these weapons, like I said, consistently prove themselves not worth investigation. Pistols are... Eh, pistols are... Yeah, they are what they are. Now, the vacuum tube revolver has chain lightning, which I thought would make it really good S tier, but I tried it and it was honestly like b tier it was not enough damage to really justify all the setup i had to like eat away for aim for the head boom 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 like six shots and then the chain lightning was good not great 
Unfortunate. For a chain lightning weapon, I thought it'd be really good. Being locked in nature doesn't help anything either. So yeah, mid B tier, I suppose. Uh, the Vinertech burst weapons, this is so bad. You're, you're spending energy cells, tons of shots to do minimal damage. I really think the expense of these weapons factors into them being an F tier, but the damage was just not there. It just wasn't there. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I tried it. It did not impress. Whisper 45 is like the turncoat, but uh, better. Higher base crit chance, really good perks. It doesn't have the double crit damage, but it has the uh, affliction, which is just fine. Damage to afflicted is pretty much as good as a crit perk. Oh, I'm sorry. They both have damage to afflicted. Oh, I see. It just doesn't have that second crit damage. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Mag size is great too, though. Shooting for a longer sustained period. By the way, this is bugged on the left. It's not a one second. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not a one second reload and the mag size should be 16 with a mag size perk. Uh, you can you can mix and match and double crit damage is actually pretty viable because whisper weapons or I'm sorry, silenced weapons. So the whisper 45, silent specter and the wraith all have a base 20% crit chance, which is actually quite nice. Uh, extra 10% on the base might not sound like a lot, but it is, and uh, I really, really, really favor this weapon. And for the same reason as the Affliction with the Turncoat, it actually has really good crowd clearing, and it has the damage to back it up. So S tier is quite fair. Zap Zap uh, shoots a uh, kind of explosion that does some damage, and it's, uh, it's not a ton, but it's better than you might think. It might be similar to like the Tiny Insimilar Death and the uh, Paper Shredder. I'm not sure where it lies. It's been a long time since I tried that weapon as well. I don't know. Founder's Revolt, sorry if you're not a founder and you don't have access to this weapon, but it's an obvious S tier. Uh, maybe closer to up here, because it's semi-auto, shoots really fast, but every single bullet chains to a nearby target, which is really good. It has excellent perks, and yeah, it's a founder's weapon. Fun fact, it is the founder's variant of the Haywire Storm. So... It actually has the same, I can't compare it because it's uh, it's tricky, but I do have a leveled up copy and you can see that the uh, Founders of Old, mine is Bright Core. So that's gonna make sense uh, in a second why I say these are actually the same. If this was a Sunbeam copy, it is the exact same stats as the Haywire. You can see it's shooting faster fire rate. Uh, Sunbeam isn't, so, okay. Bright Core is not 10% faster fire rate than Sunbeam. Sunbeam is 10% less. So if you actually take 10% of eight off of here, actually, I can I can prove it. If you do eight times 0 0.9, you get the 7.2 that our Sunbeam over here is rocking. So it's basically like, so, okay. I'm trying to say several things at once. First, the Founders of Volt is the Founders version of the Haywire Storm. It's the same weapon with a better six perk. And it's a fake legendary. A lot of people probably knew this without being told it, but it's epic because epic games and it actually has the exact same stats of, of a legendary weapon so if you are a founder who has always been ignoring their founders of Volt just because it was purple surprise it's actually legendary on paper so um yeah, that's a thing you should know. Founders Volt's very good. I hate my copy because it's bright core and I'm stuck with it and uh, epic won't change it but it's an excellent weapon, even bright core. So uh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Last word, super fun weapon. I am biased enough to maybe put it in S tier because it shoots really fast hit fire, really slow and accurate aimed in. Six shot rounds means it's well paired with Calamity because she boosts it by a ton of damage for six shots. And the headshot explosion actually gives it some crowd clearing. I personally played a lot of FPS games in my day and have pretty good accuracy. So I can use this with well effectiveness. But most people can't. So if you're an average player who doesn't have good enough aim to utilize all six shots every time aiming for the head as much as you can, it, it's probably not going to perform well. But if you can use this weapon properly, it's like the Bald Eagle. Uh, low S tier, I think is fair. I think is fair. It's really, really fun. I'm being biased. I'll admit that. Maybe high A tier. But regardless, it's in the same sort of region. So very good weapon. Primal Pistol. No crowd clearing. Um... What was the six perk on this? It was the frenzy six perk, right? Oh, let me uh, undo the compare and go over here. Yeah, extra damage uh, with targets, limiting miss monsters, makes you shoot faster, reload, uh, not reload. Um, yeah, move quicker. It's tough. Really good single target, but it was just nothing against crowds, and the six perks didn't really save it. I'll put it in mid A tier. It was all right. It was all right. Maybe B tier. Um, I don't know. All of these shoot pretty fast. I'll put it in mid-A tier. Mid-A tier for now, but yeah, definitely a weapon that needs some improvement if I'm going to really give it a good try, but I'm, um, uh, yeah, pretty satisfied with that list. 
again, I need to do a lot more research on pistols, apparently. I don't like having so many blind spots, but uh, it's been a long time since I've been impressed by a weapon I was pretty firm on, so maybe I'll give some of these a try, and you guys can stay tuned to some uh, future uploads. Maybe next year I update this tier list, I'll have a lot more to say. But regardless, that's the video. Subscribe if you're new, leave a like if you liked it, comment down below what you guys thought. I'm sure plenty of you disagreed, and the comments are there for you. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, have a good rest of your day. Bonus extension of the recording. I forgot that I was going to compare to my recent uh, or my last tier list. So let's see. Uh, Plasmatron, Founders of Old. Okay, Founders of Old was up a few places in my last review. That can give or take. You know, everything in the S tier is pretty solid. I was a little more harsh on the last word. Okay, and the vacuum tube pistol. So this goes to show a weapon that's good on paper. I think. I used this weapon more after I recorded that and recognized that the damage and the chain lightning was not as spicy as it should have been. Okay, I guess I favor the Coco 45 a lot more now. It's interesting how these things can shift because I don't really know what my justification was for A tier. I could listen to my video, but oh, that's too much. Wait, did YouTube auto timestamp this? Yup, I didn't do that. I, I did not timestamp this. Other weapons, yeah, thank you, YouTube. Interesting how one person can make two completely different lists <laughs> two years apart but uh, yeah that's why i update the list i'm always trying to post these tier lists with my most updated knowledge and uh yeah that's what you get welcome back to another tier list update we're gonna be covering rocket launchers again because new weapon has come to the game you know sometimes that happens gives us a conversation sometimes i reuse old weapons we thought we were bad and it gives me some new insights so typically in these updated tier lists i like to refer back to the old list see where i was at and kind of compare and contrast this time i'm gonna go blind i'm not gonna refer back to that because a lot of my standings didn't change that much but some of them definitely did and i have a lot more to say about that and i'm just gonna see what i get on this and then we'll compare at the very end so first and foremost s tier is super serious to me that is like the best weapon in the entire game in its class or weapons that can generally do it all i try to put very few items in s tier i uh, i respect it pretty heavily and then uh, there's no f tier so none of these launchers are super terrible completely unusable even that noble launcher i know you're thinking it these weapons are almost always generally viable and uh, typically very, very good as rocket launchers are, if you haven't seen my top 10 weapons video, are, are pretty much the S tier weapons of Save the World. So let's just start off with the bazooka. Easy A tier. Bazooka and the trash cannon. Trash cannon is just a more cost effective version. They have the exact same stats other than their cost and durability. So the trash cannon is just a better version. And both of these weapons are base game, which doesn't always factor into my opinion, but the fact that you can get these weapons from normal missions, from llamas pretty easily without vouchers or flocks or events, and they're actually really, really strong. I've seen the Fortnite DB uh, range weapon tier list, uh, just like the rank of base damage, and these launchers are unironically very strong. I'm not just putting it up here because they're base game, they are actually very good. In fact, the Dam Buster is kind of up there. So Dam Buster is sort of better or worse depending on how you use it. I believe it does more damage. Ah, I can't remember exactly, but it does at least knock enemies around. So there's a ton of utility with that. I know that endurance players would put this in S tier because it's just required to get smashers and mini bosses out of the way. I don't know if it knocks back mini bosses, but at least smashers, and it's really really good it has a hidden value so knockback does not actually show on a weapon stats sheet if you go to a weapon like the v6 launcher you are not going to see anything other than impact in fact there is a final tier all the way down here that it does not show called knockback and the uh, dam buster is like the highest in the game it really moves enemies around and another notable one is the sod buster down here it has quadruple impact perks which can be really fun but it won't send the enemies flying so dam buster has a lot of utility and a lot of damage that puts it in a tier in fact even the blue i'm sorry the purple dam buster actually shows on like the top 10 uh, list there sorry for the alerts i am recording this on stream so usually i'd say twitch link down below but this series of videos i'm recording on youtube today because twitch is not working so yeah bowler another a tier weapon in fact i'm gonna put the uh, jabberwocky right next to it because they are very similar the bowler shoots a cannonball that bounces around clunks around i made a bunch of videos on it super super fun weapon the jabberwocky doesn't bounce quite as far but it explodes into four more projectiles essentially quadrupling its damage they're not the same weapon but their play style is similar enough to talk about them at the same time huge damage super fun a little weird to use that's why i'm gonna put it lower a tier it's not for everybody but the damage is there i uh, i have a video on hand this is just a thing i do as a youtuber completely finished thumbnail is done and everything 
showcasing a Jabberwocky doing 10 million damage. This is just a just a, like an unpublished video on my on my computer. I am saving this for when the Jabberwocky comes around the a weekly shop, but it literally does 10 million damage in one explosion if you crit. It's super strong, super fun. Now, I do know this from the last tier list. I believe I ranked the Cannonade and the V6 Launcher very highly. In fact, in my example, you can see that I have the V6 Launcher supercharged, same as the Cannonade. So you know that I am biased when I say that these weapons are not as good as I used to think. I have tried them. I'm going to again uh, do these at the same time because they're both fully auto rockets that have a mag size of six and eight here. And they're really good, you know, single target, just boom, 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 boom. Taking advantage of my rocket loadout, my insane rocket loadout where you use uh, Star Spangled Headhunter in the lead. She reduces your ammo consumption and you can shoot your mag forever. It, it basically 3.6 times your mag size. It's amazing. But these weapons, I've used them and I've paid attention and the damage is just not there. Man, I think they were in A tier. I believe their fire rate and accuracy can make them A tier. Mm, not quite S tier, but every time I've used the Cannonade or V6 launcher without a lot of setup, it really let me down. It really let me down. So I'm going to put these in high B tier. That's just kind of how I'm feeling. I don't know. They, they made me feel bad. I was using my favorite rockets and they were just not doing it the amount of shots it took to kill smashers is just unacceptable and we're talking about like totally rocking out here double crit damage we're talking about all the bonuses you could give these things it's just quite not there now Cannonade is really good for utility. I actually use this for destroying trees and rocks. Pretty awesome. That's pretty cool, but that's not anything that's going to raise its ranking. So I'm going to put these in high B tier for now. Maybe I'll change my mind. Now, the atomizer might have been S tier. Again, I'm not checking, but the plasmatic discharger exists. This weapon, in my opinion, has made the deatomizer almost entirely obsolete. The deatomizer does really good crowd damage. It's 35 energy cells a hit, which is a lot. And it used to be best for Storm King end phase. It was never that great for mist monsters and single target damage. Crowd clearing is an expensive reason to use a rocket. There are a lot of cheaper options that do the same job. I don't know. I think this might be controversial, but I really want to put it in C tier. This thing really fell from grace. Now, the reason is not because the weapon got nerfed, but because it's obsolete. There are other weapons that do its job way better. The plasmatic discharger has been said by me to be the best weapon in save the world. That might have been when I was referring to like three energy cells. I don't know if I fully agree with that because the best weapon needs to do everything. This weapon takes three seconds to charge up and then it shoots an orb of energy that does a ridiculous amount of damage. It is the best smasher killer in the game. Uh, smashers and their form factor, meaning smasher mini bosses, take inordinately more damage from the discharger than normal enemies. If you have a basic skinny husk mini boss, it will take a lot less from the discharger. So it's not like this thing is a true soul mini boss killer but versus the end king i'm sorry the storm phase storm king end phase got it in the end between the storm king end phase and smasher mini bosses and smashers the discharger is uh unparalleled it, it does not have peers in that category for 30 energy cells which you'll note is less than 35 it is 35 right look at that expensive 35 heat generation uh are we just oh yeah generation is basically how much ammo it uses as well so 35 it's expensive so it's 30 energy cells instead of 35 and it does way more damage over time it's just it's same similar area of effect damage as well so for three seconds startup it is far better than the deatomizer it's just uh it just it completely knocked it down like two tiers <laughs> I, I i don't know what else to say the the discharger's nuts this weapon deserves to be where it is and while we're talking about s tier let's get the obvious ones up here uh so i do say weapons that can do it all or the best in their category so the pot shot in i know you can charge up the storm king's wrath to hit crowds of enemies but that's 60 energy cells it's not really something you want to do Pot shot cannot do crowd clearing pretty much whatsoever, but it is so much damage versus a single target and that goes for the wrath as well that it's fine. If you use these weapons to pick off mini bosses, smashers, miss monsters of any kind, you'll be doing great. In fact, in the Storm King fight, it still makes sense to use the wrath and pot shot for crystals or the mini bosses. In fact, even though the discharger technically kills the mini boss in like less total shots and kind of faster, 
it takes three seconds to charge up and then it shoots a slow projectile to get where it's going. Pot shot, way quicker. You can double pump it super easy, does a crap ton of damage. It sometimes bugs to just do double damage. Everybody kind of knows this and has experienced it. So it can hit harder than the Wrath, but the Wrath has kind of a lot more going for it. These are your S tier launchers for sure. Uh, everybody in the community knows this and uh, there's really no other place for them. Now, Desert Blaster, back to the fun ones. Super strong weapon. Uh, a tier is kind of competitive. Um, I'm gonna put these group damage weapons down here. I guess I don't really know exactly where they go Death Blaster is very expensive, but it can bounce up and down if you have a ceiling above you side to side with the walls It can hit the same target many many times in my video covering it again. Apologies for the alerts. I Showcased it as a weapon that was destroying mini bosses and smashers because it was just one hit bouncing a bunch of times annihilating them. super fun Dragon's Fury. Oh boy. This weapon is Pretty not great. I'll put it in D tier. It, it shoots a projectile where it lands and then fireworks happen for a while and it does damage over time. Lock to fire. So lock to fire is a huge knock when none of these weapons up here are locked to any element other than energy. And the weapons that are locked to energy are there for a reason. The atomizer used to be there for a good reason. I don't know anymore. But the fury it does damage over time it's not a ton it is dragon's fury right i feel like i'm i'm losing a sort by subtype right now and just double check this because it's not a weapon i use it often it is dragon's fury yeah so it's it's pretty not great and uh i'm actually gonna put the uh, other weapon i tease the noble launcher so i know i tease early on pretending like the noble launcher be way higher i had a whole feud with Matteo when he and i were talking about it because he made a whole video defending the noble launcher talking about how awesome it is and i made a whole video angry face like it's not that good however if you really help this weapon, you run totally rocking out wafers and you just give it the best perks, demolition is penny, it can actually hit for million plus damage. Not millions, but it can hit million like an arc. So it's not unusably bad, all right? I, I It's not. It's not unusably bad. But it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so it's like low D tier, but it's not an F tier. All right, this is not an honorary F tier position. It's, God, if you like this weapon and you really don't care about energy cells, it'll work. It it will kill the enemies in front of you, but I cannot sign off on this weapon. And the more I think about it, the more I feel like I did the deatomizer dirty. Maybe high B tier. It still hits like a truck. I mean, it always has. It didn't get nerfed. I mean, it's not 10 million damage strong, but like, it's... It should not be in C tier. That's that's too bad. Like a uh, below the cannonade. I think I was feeling emotional. I think high B tier is a is a better place for that. This is a good reason to watch these videos. I think a lot of people can see these. Go down below, comment. Just like when I told you the nailer was good. You guys remember that? I had a whole thing in the uh, assault weapons video where I talked about the nailer being amazing. Put it in S tier. I had so many comments from people who had leveled up their copy in the middle of watching the video before continuing far enough to watch me lower it. I I feel a little bad for that joke, but you guys should definitely watch these videos all the way through. Um, so yeah. Now the uh, semi-auto launchers here. These are egg bombs are pretty not great. Snowballs locked to water, uh, so it's only good against fire enemies. It's pretty. I don't know. It's they're pretty not great. I've tried to use these in videos featuring them, even with the insane rocket loadout. It it did okay. It's like a more restricted cannonade. They're not bad. Again, a C tier launcher is still an amazing weapon. It's just not essentially that amazing. And yeah, somebody in chat's commenting on the deatomizer being blow, blow the bazooka. I think you haven't used the bazooka in, the while, in a while. That weapon hits really hard. It's actually very strong, and it's only three rockets per shot. Yeah, deatomizer below bazooka, not an accident. It's actually a really good weapon. You should go try the bazooka. Seriously, you'll be sh you'll be shocked. Uh, Jackal launcher is basically a fire bazooka. I don't remember if it does more or less damage nowadays, but without checking, I can say that it's locked to fire. So, uh, in fact, we can just compare that real easily. See, we got the launcher sword here. Let's just do, look at this. Uh, actually, bazooka versus uh, deatomizer. Look at how much harder the bazooka is hitting. I know the deatomizer hits in a ball and then it explodes into like 16 projectiles, but those projectiles don't necessarily hit the enemy you're aiming at. And uh, I know that I'm, I'm probably running damage perks on this as well. I am running double damage, but you can run a crit build on the bazooka as well if you want. Like, it's... It's hitting pretty hard, but the one that I wanted to comment on was the Jackal Launcher. So if you compare these stats, yeah, it looks like the Jackal Launcher is hitting a bit harder with weird triple reload perks. Okay, that's not comparable, but it hits harder without the damage perks helping it, but it's also locked to fire. So if you're using this in a nature zone, high A tier, um, I'm going to put it mid A tier because it's 
it's a great weapon. It's seasonal, so you can only get it one time a year, but that's most weapons. So, lock to fire. I'm going to keep where it is. Metal Marauder hits like a truck. This weapon is real strong. I used this recently and it blew me away. In fact, here, if I just do. Oh, oh yeah, hang on here. Just do metal. Where did I. Uh, metal Marauder. Uh, I think I commented right here. Deleting Smashers. Yeah. I, I remember it hitting really, really, really hard. And that's, that's well known. I'll put it above here. It's locked to fire and physical. So it's not quite. Not quite universal, but it's insanely strong and should be respected as such. And uh, yeah, it does a lot, of, a lot of damage. Now the quad launcher. It's a fun weapon. That fire can stack up and do a lot of damage. It's not a bad weapon. I think it's on the upper end of C tier. Lock to fire, I believe. It's locked to fire as well. So it's a weapon that is uh, fun to use. You can you can have a good time with it. As you can see, I did triple reload just screwing around one time. It's uh, It's not great, but it's really not bad. And the uh, Sandals Little Helper, right below the Metal Marauder. Super good weapon, hits like a truck, it can be any element in the entire game. It is weaker than the Metal Marauder, so depending on the element, it could be better. It has Affliction though as well, which is super good. That means you can hit the enemies with one big explosion and then just watch them tick away. You don't have to hit an entire second shot just because they're on one HP. That's a huge, huge perk for it. Whether or not it's better or worse, I don't know. It's worse damage, but its utility makes it high A tier. Can't quite be S tier, it's not Annihilating Smashers or anything, but it's a really, really, really good launcher. Probably Probably the best of the non S tiers, I think, in my opinion, because it's, it's basically just an upgraded bazooka. Uh, the Santa's Little Helper does really well. Now, the uh, Shark Attack is kind of like A tier damage, but bounces around a lot. Really hard to make good use of this. I'll, I'll put in low B tier below the Deatomizer. Completely different weapon to the Deatomizer, but I remember having fun with this. Again, that was like double core damage, totally rocking out, having actual fun, not just a practical build, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's fun to use, it'll work, but it's not a mind-blowing amount of damage and then the uh, sod buster also has elemental advantages to it so if you have these six perks that give it 44 percent extra damage to a certain element and then you perk it correctly so if it's doing extra damage to nature and you ran it with a fire copy this thing will annihilate it's super strong get millions of damage with ease um it is very specific to elemental targets which means it's not as good versus physical so i'll put it below the other big launchers here but it's really good and it can have that quadruple impact so if that matters to you you can have that uh have some fun with that uh, Thumper, I'll put it right below Cannonade. I feel like it's a worse Cannonade. I haven't used it too much. That's an opinion that could change. You know, if you ever want to change my opinion, comment down below or hang out on Twitch. Let me know what you're thinking. But, uh, yeah, this is the one time I'm going to compare because we're getting close to the end. I put the Vacuum Tube Launcher in S tier. What? <laughs> okay. So, I'm clearly taking S tier a lot more seriously this time. Uh, the Vacuum Tube Launcher is locked to nature and it's crazy expensive. So, it is... Very good. Obviously, I put an S tier last time. I, I don't think that was a mistake, but being locked to an element and being super expensive is something that's mattering a lot to me right now, and I'm, I'm factoring that in pretty heavily. I'll put it in high A tier. If you're willing to spend the amount, it will do the damage, but you're going to pay for it. So I'll put it up here. I'll put it up here. It's, it's a strong weapon that's undeniable, but it's locked to nature. So you're only really using this in water or nature missions. Um, same element is 67% of the damage. So it's like 8% less than energy. It's really not that big of a deal. I mentioned earlier, something was only good versus a certain element. Like if you're using a fire weapon, fire or nature is going to be fine. In this case, nature, you want water or nature. So it's, it's limited, but it's super strong. I'll put it in mid A tier and we could talk about what, uh, I'm going to turn my fan on because I'm sweating. We're going to talk about what old beast was thinking. So Wow, Cannonade and V6 Launcher. That's surprising. I uh, must not have used them in a while because now I've, I've brushed up on that and I've, I've refined. Now, I might have put them in S tier in the scope of the entire game. I don't remember exactly what I was thinking at the time, but launchers are all really good. Nothing in this S tier is a bad weapon, but you can see like a lot of the, uh, the high A tier weapons were in S tier, so I kind of just shifted them down. I like to take S tier seriously, as I've said several times. And then I've also shifted some stuff around based on changes. And of course, the Plasmid Discharger now exists. It is probably the best launcher in the game. Like, seriously, it's awesome. So, uh, yeah, I think, this looks, I think this is a good solid list. Comment down below if you agree or disagree. Comment what you might want to see in the future. Uh, subscribe if you're new. I got videos going out every three days. Twitch link down below if you ever want to be here during a recording. Today is an exception. So, yeah, Twitch down below for the future. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.